um, 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 then we watch the movie. Then we come back. Now we're talking again, and we've seen the movie. We're so much more educated. It's funny the whole time. My name is Dan. <laughs> <laughs> this is Molly. I'm also Dan. And I'm Beth. And our movie, this episode where we are respecting our listeners, Ooh. is Clueless. Clueless. So, quickly... Clueless is the second place winner of the Respect Listener Opinions poll, um, but we are watching it. The first, uh, the winner was Fargo, and today here in Minnesota is the day after uh, Dante Wright was shot by the police and were amidst the Derek Chauvin murder trial. So we didn't feel great about making comedy out of a comedy about Minnesota cops. So we're going to watch Fargo later. And tonight we're watching Clueless. So get ready to be respected again, someone who voted for Fargo. (laughs) (laughs) To be fair, Fargo only won by one vote. So we're just disrespecting one person. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, can't we just can't we just go find like two, three, ten more votes for Clueless? I mean, can't we just call up the Georgia Secretary of State and just get a couple more (laughs) votes for Clueless? Put a lot of pressure. (laughs) Put a lot of pressure on uh, Brad Raffensperger. Yeah, wow. Or I think Raffensperg? I don't know. Mm. Great poll anyway. either, way. <laughs> either way. And you know what? Hey, if you're going to get mad about the Georgia law, you can get mad about water, but it's probably better to get madder that the Georgia legislature can now just fire state employees. So Brad Raffensperger's of the world will never stand in the way of democracy again. Or in the way of protecting democracy. You know what? Here's the thing. It's been a real <laughs> stressful few weeks with the Chauvin trial. And um, this latest incident was like last night, like yep. yesterday afternoon. And so, yeah, I'm, I'll just, I just want to admit that uh, I have a little bit of fire in me. And, uh, and I'm hoping that this, uh, I will be able to fairly watch this Alicia Silverstone comedy from, I'm going to say 1989. Just Ooh. throwing it out there. 89? I'm gonna say, Whoa. I'm going to say I don't 90, nah. 94. 94? Yeah. Say 93. How old do you think Alicia Silverstone is? I'm going to oh. say... Okay, that hurt a little bit more than it needed to. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> of course she's not 100 years old. <laughs> well, because, you know, you're comparing my age to hers. So, yeah, I'm not, so I guess it would be... I'm not at all. I'm comparing <laughs> I'm the fact 1989. that she plays a high schooler in this movie. So she's anywhere no, from fair. 21 to 40. Mm, not 40. <laughs> she's a woman in Hollywood. Come on. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Then she'd be the mom. 21 to <laughs> 23. Oh, the grandma. I just read an article about somebody... <laughs> More accurately, I saw a headline about somebody being okay. offered the, the role of grandmother at 40 years old. Wow, 40 year old grandmother. I was like, Hollywood, you need to cool it. Yeah, like recently? <laughs> yes. Cool I it. I think so. I don't know. I saw the headline recently. Yeah. I'll find it and I mean, send it I over. I guess if the movie is specifically about a family in which a woman had a child very young, fair play. Sure. <laughs> but. How? How old is the grandchild? That's what I want to know. Yeah, Beth, was that in the headline? Yeah. 20. Release release the birth certificate for the grandchild. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. It was not in the headline. No details were in the headline. I just was like, ugh. And then I scrolled past This (laughs) is about the movie Clueless, which definitely came out in 1980-whatever that Molly said, because I respect Molly because she is a listener of this show, I assume. Is that true? I I am. I am. I, I, you know, and I'm not positive about my 89 but i am trying to stick to it did we make it clear at the top that respect listener opinion month the listeners vote on the movie that we watch we did not did we say that oh (laughs) it just makes it sound like we found a listener caveats (laughs) yes but uh thank you so much for voting yes we respect you and we're about to talk about the movie (laughs) we got i assume a great response 
Uh, but again, Dan is usually the one who pays attention to that, <laughs> not me. Yeah, so. I did pay attention, and we did get a great response. Great. More about Thank that you. later. Ooh. Now, oh, oh, well, I don't know. Teaser, yeah, I love hey, it. Hey, no, love that's that good. Teaser. Hey, I'm a fan. <clears throat> hey, could you help me remember who the writer director is? It's Amy something, right? Of this Ooh, movie, yeah, Raffin she's the same <laughs> as another movie that we've seen. <laughs> really? Same writer, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Amy something. Something. Man. What I remember Amy is this Smart. movie premiered yeah. during MTV Spring Break. Okay. Oh. And it was supposed to be this big thing, but it turned out it was like at an outdoor venue and people who were into Spring Break were mostly into like meeting each other. Yeah. yeah. And so Blood nobody grind. watched her movie and she was pretty bummed about it. The writer or the... The, the writer director, yeah. Mm. So MTV, 10 Things I better. Hate About You. Is that it? Is it the same person? Gret's bet. I don't know. That's the one. That's the same. Okay. okay. Great. Okay. That seems right. That seems like a well. Well, it's, both a, it's a similar adapted thing. from Shakespeare. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say that. Oh, I I just saw this movie, movie Wait, for the first they are? time. This yeah. one is too. Yes, this Emma. One. Yes, is it true? Emma. Is Emma. Emma's not Shakespeare. Yeah, that's uh, oh, we're not we're Emma. Right. Um, Jane Austen. No, you're right. You're right. Jane Austen. Sorry, they're both adapted from classic stories. Oh, okay. And what I meant was Emma by Jane Austen, and the other one was Shakespeare, Taming of the Shrew. Yes. Great. So those are like the same. Like they're basically contemporaries, separated by like hundreds of years. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, the thing that I, I just saw this movie like within the last month for the first time. <laughs> for the first time? <laughs> for the first time. Oh. First time, long time. Um, what prompted that? Well, we've been... Uh, Beth and Beth's boyfriend mm. have been watching a movie every Sunday night mm -hmm. since the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And so um, we were looking for something kind of light. And I was like, I've never seen Clueless. And so we watched that. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing that surprised me the most was that Paul Rudd is a major character in it. Yes. And yes. I had no idea that he was in the movie at all. Yeah. And he looks um, exactly the same as he, he does looks now. exactly yep. the same. <laughs> One of our the biggest stream <laughs> Discord users, jumping way ahead, asked us to comment on teaser? how much. This is a teaser. Teaser alert. Uh, second half, <laughs> we <laughs> answer questions off Discord. Patreon.com. And one <laughs> of those questions is about how Paul Rudd looks the same. Am I right? So strap in for some Paul Rudd look the same. Paul Rudd not look the same. Talk. Yeah, I mean, we're that recalling that half. he looks the same, but we won't know for sure until we watch the movie. Yeah. He is yeah. so fresh-faced and young. Mm -hmm. And he's wearing, I specifically remember he wears a t-shirt in this movie with a blue circle on it, and it's some kind of social activism t-shirt that was also featured in Sassy Magazine or Jane Magazine. You're welcome. Ooh, Dan's bet. Speaking of that, uh, all of the clothes in this movie are amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amazing clothes. Uh, I've watched this several times, this video on YouTube several times of Tan France giving a tour of his house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and at one point he talks, he shows, he's showing off his closet. And at one time, one point he talks about some jacket. I can't remember the brand now. Like it's some brand name jacket that he has. And he's like, members really proud only? Of it. No, it's like Araya. I think it's Araya or something like oh. that. But like it's when she gets left at the gas station or wherever she is, she's abandoned somehow and yeah. <laughs> has to walk home. And she's like, this is an Araya. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. He references that. And so I was like, oh, that's from the Tan France YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one thing about this movie. Great. Um, and that is that. Alicia Silverstone gets flowers in class and Paul Rudd kneels down next to her at her desk and says, nice stems. And he's talking about the flowers, but also her legs. Mm. Ooh, wait, Ooh. And she's like, how could that be possible? <laughs> Thanks. She's into it. Well, yeah. Isn't there like a weird thing where like they're like on paper related, but yes. they're like into each other. <clears throat> they're, her dad and his mom were married or something uh, like that. So like um, but they have different... Step siblings? X-step? Yes, I believe the that's old, the relationship. The old X-step? 
The old ex step. Well, okay. Molly, it sounds like it's going to have an alternative family dynamic with some divorced parents. You're going to eat that up. <laughs> oh, right. All right. I bet they really, I hope they dig into that and just turn the screws on their uh, <laughs> shared trauma between the two of them <laughs> so Molly can stay engaged. Yikes. Beth's bet we're going to love her dad. Okay. Because mm-hmm. okay. he's a very specific character. <laughs> oh, no. is it Cher Horowitz? I what? think it's her name. Oh, Who? yes, that seems right. The dad? No, oh, the, her the, name. The, Alicia Silverstone's name is Cher. Uh, She's I think it's Cher. Horowitz. Great. And okay. her dad is Mr. Lawyer Horowitz. Mr. Esquire. Lawyer Horowitz. Mr. Lawyer Horowitz. Mm-hmm. Esquire. <laughs> 1989. Um, uh, I remember very much the, the scene that sticks in my mind the most is um, where they're driving that VW Beetle through traffic, through L.A. traffic. Yeah. And her, I think her best friend is driving, and she has a total freak out, but they somehow make it to the side of the road. Oh, yeah. Actually, there's so much about this movie. Oh, because it has the song, um, Rollin' With My Homies, as what? a sentimental song. Yes. Do you remember that song, Rollin' With My Homies? I do not. Rollin' With Homies. Um, you Will okay. is featured prominently in this movie. Great. And it's treated as, like, a love song. Hmm. Um, oh, it's so good. Oh, this movie is good. Oh, I hope I like it. Ooh, I do, too, after all this. Yikes. Are there any other adults in this movie besides Mr. Lawyer Dad? Esquire? Yes. Aren't there two teachers right? that fall in love? What? Yeah. Teachers fall in love? Yes. Teacher love? Yes. Yeah. There's teacher love. We've got uh, <laughs> Sean Wallace or Wallace Sean, whatever his name is. Oh. Nice. Right? Is one the of Princess the teachers. Bride. Princess Bride. Yep. And, and Lady with Glasses. Oh, which oh. I know. I've seen She's... her in other things before. but Joan Cusack. No, no, mm-hmm. it's a she's a brilliant character actress, but I, I can't think of her name. Mar- but you've seen her in lots Margo of things. Cusack. Margaret. What are you trying to say? Margaret Martindale? Is that what you're yep. trying to say? Yep. No. Uh, uh, not Margaret Martindale. Uh, Judy Dench. Judy, <laughs> Judy Dench. Greer. <laughs> Judy Greer. Uh, no. Meryl Streep, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> I've seen Emma, no big deal, the most recent film one mm-hmm. this, she got a yellow dress on the cover <laughs> okay it's pretty so good Bill check Dahi's that one out is that the, one with, the um, yellow dress one uh gwyneth paltrow no, no. that's the a newer one. one okay got it it's this got a chest yeah queen's lady. gambit yeah oh very cool <laughs> it's pretty chest good chest lady <laughs> i don't know enjoyed it anya so there are two teachers that fall in love. Well, I was I thought that as the movie, I have no idea what the plot of Clueless was, having never seen it before. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, it's about them trying to get these two teachers to fall in love. But it happens almost immediately. Oh. They're like, we did it. They fell in love. <laughs> oh, that's not who she's trying to get to fall in love. So, Wait, so, em, yes, so I guess, oh, is that her goal? At, at the beginning. But meanwhile, at the but beginning meanwhile of the she movie. meets... Yes. Yes. Because she's trying to, she's sort of an amateur matchmaker. Yes. But she sort of takes in um, the social, the, this girl who would otherwise be a social outcast, mm. builds her up, and then kind of gets left behind socially, creates some strain mm-hmm. in Cher's life. Yeah. And then in the end, it all works out. And that actor is Brittany Murphy. Yes, Brittany Murphy. Wow. Oh, so sad. Yeah. Nice. Oh, so sad about her passing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And she's so good in it. She's really yep. delightful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her tearful rolling with the homies moment is fantastic. There are multiple rolling with the homies <laughs> moments? There's I'm a little two... worried about this rolling with the homies. Is this like a, it's like a bluegrass cover? No. It's not appropriative mm-hmm. in any way? I mean, kind of, but it's it's like music that's being played at a party. Mm. Okay. I I don't know. I think, you, I think the jury's out on that one. I, I guess we'll, we'll see find out. Plays. Yeah, we'll find out. Doesn't um, Dan's bet, uh, isn't her, is this the movie where, like, her friend is uh, some actor that just went completely off the deep end in the last uh, era of our political history? Oh, has become a super, super conservative Kevin Republican? Sorbo? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Her best friend is He's Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> that would be a fascinating movie. Rolling with my homies, that, that Kevin Sorbo. Name. 
Disappointed. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember her name, but I think you are right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. We can uh, confirm in the second half whether or not the co-star went off the deep end. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what is her name? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that is true. Uh, hopefully she's the only one. Wouldn't her that be a weird game? is Donald Faz- Fazion. Fa- is it yeah. Faison or Faison? Fa- Faison from Scrubs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Oh! Mm-hmm. He's like the... <laughs> The best, the other doctor at Scrubs, like the best yes. doctor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't. I can't I remember. Watch Scrubs. Tur- Turk. I think is his character's I don't know. name. I never watched Scrubs. Ooh. Um, watched some Scrubs once. He's a surgeon. I remember he's a surgeon. Okay. Yeah, he's wearing those scrubs. Yeah, he's got oh. the green scrubs. Green scrubs, green scrubs, scrubs. surgeon. Green scrubs, Blue surgeon. Scrubs, doctor. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> so what is? I've never. Okay. I've never read Emma. I don't think I've seen any of the versions of Emma. Mm. What is this movie actually about? Like, what is... Is she just, like, going around rolling with her homies for 90 minutes? Like, what is happening? But then she falls in love with Paul Rudd. Right? She... So, it's basically a matchmaker who herself falls in love. So, it's like Hello Doll. Matchmaker. I don't know. Was Hello Dolly based on Emma? (laughs) Was it? Oh, my God. Maybe. Now, I know it is. It's now. Probably, yeah. Is uh, Wally based you... on Emma? What? <laughs> Wally. Wally? Oh. Wally. Yeah, that's got Hello Dolly in it. Yeah, but I don't think that's based on Emma. <laughs> Was there a scene in the newest version of Emma where <laughs> they go into space <laughs> and humanity is like yeah. off in its own little isolated yeah. pod? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Bill yes. Nighy is like... I think Bill Nighy oh, we'll, is... We'll, ne- we'll never be able to go back to... Uh, because there's so many, there's so many garbage pee piles, and ooh, I've got squids for a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what Bill Nye sounds like. You're welcome. I don't that think was he's Bill Australian. Nye. What? That's I guy. don't think he's Australian. Bill Nye. <laughs> he's got oh, the squid wow. beard from uh, Pirates. Squid beard. Yeah. He's, he's in old... our favorite movie, Love Actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm a rocker, and I look at me oh, rocking. Oh, I'm Bill Nye, and I'm so oh right. I'm so right. grumpy because I'm an ac- alcoholic rocker man who's lonely. Oh, I'm a dead, I'm dead squid pirate, and I'm gonna mess you up, Johnny Depp. <laughs> that was better. <laughs> I honestly cannot remember for the life of me what he actually sounds like. <laughs> well, that's your prediction for the first half. Oh, we won't see him in this movie. Never mind. I take no. it back. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this uh, movie. movie. We're watching Clueless. Clueless I can try to find. I can try to find like a like a like a uh, what are those called? What are those? God, YouTube I'm clip? So thirty five. Those videos that people make. That's just like a montage of celebrities they like. I don't a know specific that. term for it. If you know what I'm talking about, young people or just hipper people my age, tweet at us. Hashtag Dan. This is what it's called, and then show me an example what? of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I have no idea what you're talking about. But Somebody listening to this show <laughs> knows exactly what I'm talking about, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Dan? Is it you listening to the show later? Who Maybe, will... <laughs> yeah. I'll tweet at it. I'll tweet at us. I wish. I wish you engaged with the podcast. What? Nothing. <laughs> Clueless. <laughs> <laughs> who's got the no, no clue? Is Alicia Silverstone? Ooh, great question. <clears throat> who's who's clueless in this? Everybody is kind of clueless, right? Oh. No, she's referring to someone specifically. She's like, I think, no, I think Brittany Murphy is clueless. Mm. They, she's oh. like, oh, we're going to take on Brittany Murphy. We're going to make her she's so clueless. Like, cool. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. she's clueless. But like Brittany Murphy's character isn't really clueless. She's kind of cool on her own. Yeah. yeah, there's like a whole meme of like some scene in this movie where Brittany Murphy is just like, just giga burning Alicia Silverstone's <laughs> character. Wow. Oh, yeah. Is Alicia yeah. Silverstone clueless because she's clueless that Paul Rudd likes her? And or that she, she likes Paul Rudd? Then she can be matched? Not, not necessarily. I think the, um, the a big point, like almost a, a, an invisible extra character of this movie the city? is. Well, certainly the city. Okay, good. <laughs> but um, also the dialogue, uh, the language, and the slang. Some of which 
apparently Amy hurt her last name because of an H. Anyway, she talked with a bunch of teens. Heckerman. Hecker. Heckerman. Heckerling. Thank you. Hecking. Heckerling. Oh, yeah. Heckerling. Heckerling. The Heckerverse. Right? Amy Heckerling? I think so. That sounds right. Oh, gosh. Let's say, okay. let's collectively bet Heckerling. Okay. okay. Yeah. Unless and... Dan wants to be spicy and contrarian. Oh, Hecker. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, but she she said that she went around and talked to a bunch of teens, mm. and that they kind of made up their own kind of um, slang within their small circle. Right. Um, I think other people feel like she just made some of it up. I mean, it's but also, either way, it's really distinctive, and I feel like Clueless is kind of emblematic of that. It's also possible that she talked to these teens about it, and they were just like. Pfft. And they just made shit up to troll her because they're <laughs> teens. Yeah, teens. Did I ever tell you about the time twenty twenty came to my high school? No. Yeah. So I went to wait. A inner before city we public... begin, hold yeah. on. Yeah. Before we begin, is this one of those Molly stories where like it starts out as a charming anecdote, and then it gets super dark unexpectedly? <laughs> they're like showing you a dead little bodies. Bit, yeah, and absolutely. Okay. <laughs> just checking. I just want to be prepared. Wait, what did you say, Dan? I asked if they were like. Showing you dead bodies in trunks of cars or something. <laughs> oh, no, not like that. Okay. Um, People but trying to get across the border from to East Germany. Okay. I'm sorry. Can I? I'm sorry. Is What is 2020? <laughs> oh, dun, my dun. gosh. It's an investigative reporter. Oh, okay. It's like a reporting I show that makes you paranoid about... Okay, Stuff. I think you're talking about like a band, but the, oh, the, no. the show 2020. Very That's different. Matchbox 20. Got it. Matchbox 20. Okay. <laughs> Matchbox 2020. <laughs> Walking down this alley in every music video we made. And he said, baby, I'm going to Molly's High School. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Molly. 2020 came to your high school. <laughs> yeah, and the it was that guy. Um, oh, the guy with the mustache who like went super Geraldo. conservative towards the end. Oh, yeah, it was Geraldo. No, was it Geraldo? No, no you, it was the other I, guy. I, I know who you're talking about. Stossel. Yeah, John Stossel. John Stossel. Yep. Yep. Anyway, so they showed up with a camera crew, and I'm part of like maybe 15 or 20 people in a classroom, and he's asking everybody about slang. And so people are talking a little bit about slang here and there. Wait, it was and the same thing as Amy's plan? No, I don't think he was writing a screenplay. And actually, I don't know what the story <laughs> was supposed to be okay. about. Because <laughs> in this conversation, there was a moment where I think there was maybe one or two black students in the room. With, like the rest of us, I think, were white. Mm -hmm. Maybe some other representation, but it was a pretty white crowd. And I remember... This guy saying, actually, I find it really irritating that all the white kids use language that I use with my friends because I don't try to talk like them like, oh, that's very neat and fun. And he did an imitation of, of white people. And I, was, I remember at the time, my only thought was like, we don't say neat mm -hmm. <laughs> or fun. Um but it was my first introduction to the concept of appropriation without, mm. um, like, like totally getting it. Like, it definitely planted a seed, and, yeah. like, we had other conversations. But it ended up being this really rich, very interesting conversation about race and appropriation and how you use language. Because, you know, because of where I was and whatever, we used the same slang that other kids did. Mm -hmm. Not particular words, obviously, but, right. like... A lot of it, and yep. it seemed pretty fluid. Um, it was in you know music and popular culture at the time. Anyway, we had this really rich conversation, and the story came out. Everybody tunes in. They showed like kids eating lunch in the background, like B roll, and talked about something totally different. Not <laughs> a single word of the interview, which was like two hours long. They didn't use any of it. Wow. Great. So what was and the I'll story? I'll never about? know why. Lunch? It was supposed to be about Lunch. slang, but it turned Lunch. out to be about like high school. Hey, kids go to high school. Like there was no <laughs> content to it whatsoever. Exactly. Attending a school for like, what? Do you know kids go to high school. <laughs> Look at all these kids preparing in themselves one place. for the wider world. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing in there? What was John Stossel expecting? What yeah, did he want from us? Do you think your story is what like 
drove him to where he went. Like he's just like, oh, this story's garbage. I can't believe I wasted so much time with those kids. And then he immediately pivoted to just like, our, ooh, our, our teens trying to destroy your sacred values by <laughs> smoking cigarettes. Uh, Twenty twenty investigates on fire and huffing peel. Ooh. Ooh, are these non-white people a threat to your home <laughs> several miles away? 2020 <laughs> investigates. Yeah, John Stossel sucks. In yeah, yeah. The, 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 the ultimate conclusion of the story is John Stossel but sucks. But I just wish I knew what he would have been looking for. Right? And whether he, what he just, like, what we failed to provide that he was expecting. The fact that, and the fact that they, like, hung out with you for that long, someone must have thought, like, oh, there's some good stuff in here. <laughs> you would think weird but i i don't know and and i look back and i'm really grateful to that kid and i'm sorry we were such jerks and didn't understand things so if you're listening and i know you're not but if you are <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> is your husband drinking a glass of milk in the background <laughs> me yeah i don't see anybody wait is he i really hope that's a- he's drinking something that looked like milk <laughs> i can't he see that is. how he can is? you see that Wow! How can you you can see that? I I could well he I could see then the light turned on I saw him sit down in the back. Oh, nope. <laughs> I can't I'm see him. Shift drink, my camera. I saw him drink some milk or something. He is. He is, he is drinking milk. Is Molly, you need to get out of the house right now. Just get out, Molly, Molly, get grab your child <laughs> and get out of the house right yes. now. <laughs> Come here. You can stay with us. You're not safe. <laughs> He's oh coming my God, up behind you with butter sandwiches a, right now. It's a butter sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and a tray. Uh, Something about calling his mom? Oh, <laughs> oh no. no. <laughs> Don't go to the basement Amazing. tonight. Uh, anyway, uh, Beth, just cut all that out. No, it's uh, fascinating. It is fascinating. <laughs> I really thought you were about to tell us about the band 2020 that I've <laughs> 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 Some concert. It's 3 a.m. I'm drinking milk. Oh, There's I think be... there might be a famous band that plays at a dance in this movie because oh, really? I feel like that was a trope for a long time. Uh, like that uh... some like super cool band would play. Definitely. But... What's that DC punk band? Punk pop punk band? What? Good Charlotte. Is that too <laughs> early for this? Charlotte. Yes. Yeah, I feel like it's every like movie in the nineties that involved teens, though, it's like there was some. <laughs> Semi-notable band. Uh, yeah, something that the director really loved, but princes. the people actually in it were like, who is that? I feel like it's princes. a ska something, right? Spinners. Early 90s. I don't the know. Boston, Mighty Mighty Boston. Yes. I do think it's them. I do Mighty think it's okay. them. Oh, there's a bit. Yes. Wow. Great. We're we're batting one bit bat, per 20 um, minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to bet uh, Johnny Cash. <laughs> Johnny Cash the is in this movie. Yep, cool. doing, doing his uh, doing his uh, American Folsom whatever prison blues. No, wrong American decade. American Pie, Rusty Cage cover. Yeah, probably it's something like that. Okay. Did we talk about the movie at all? What did we talk about the movie at all? Like what happened? Yeah, to it? <laughs> we yeah, we did. About it. There's a teacher that did. falls in love. Paul Rudd, uh, Rudd so so Amy nice mildly or accidentally sexually harasses mm-hmm. stepsister, and there's, there's some lawyer stuff in it. House and party uh, stick up at the gas station. Donald Faison mm-hmm. is in it. They drive a car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, a couple cars. cars. Brittany Murphy burns mm-hmm. W.C. Silverstone at some point. Mm-hmm. Yep, great fashion. Great fashion. fashion. Big breakup. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we talked about the movie. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Beth. Yeah, Beth. Get her for Does it pass the Bechdel about... Wallace test? We didn't talk about that. Uh-huh. I, oh, yeah, God, I hope okay. So. Should we up the ante and see if it passes within the first, Ooh, yeah. let's say, five oh, minutes? Super pass? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say pass. it passes in the first ninety seconds. I'm Whoa. Going spicy. Wow. I don't. I don't know. I think it might start with her at home, or maybe doing a monologue. I'm going to say five minutes. First five minutes. Fine. I'm saying 90 seconds because I respect women. 90 seconds to Mars. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Are they in this movie? Go. Maybe. I'm going to say <laughs> it passes before two men talk. Okay. Ooh. Oh. I like that. That's I'm going to say one. it passes with two different sets of women. Oh, okay. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like Just generally? Like 
she talks to one person, then she talks to another person. They're both women. Like in sequence? Distinct two, so four women? Three women. Okay. I think Alicia Silverstone is the the, the same. So you got two. The pivot. But I think like she passes diagram. twice. Yes. Okay. But like one after the other? <laughs> is there any proximity between the re- interactions? Yeah. What's I think that it, it happens before she talks to a man. Ooh. Okay. Now that Great. passes before Spicy. she talks to a man. Yes. Okay. I love it. All right. I love all these things. I hope they're <laughs> true because that would be sad if at least one of these wasn't true, considering what this movie is about. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Great. Mm. Molly? Yes. How should we rate this movie? Uh, we'll rate these Matchbox 2020s. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. So is that like a Matchbox 20 cover band? <laughs> or is like it yeah, like a episode of 2020 of about Matchbox 20? Yeah, it is It is a cover oh, band yes. that is, um, you know, updates the music just a little bit for the 2020s. Oh, oh it's a mo- okay. So it's oh. a modern band that mm-hmm. wasn't even available modern band. to play in Clueless. So they pay like... Yep modern hits of matchbox 20 songs they just take matchbox 20 songs and they add some auto tune yeah okay and yeah like remix i, I guess like that's that. not very 20 they drop they drop some bases some bass lines yeah bass in 2020 drop and bass um, i think you can they you know uh, what let's just say they're some... a cover band okay. are they dressed 2020 in is Stoffel? like they look just like them so yes there you go they look just like them cover well. band that looks so they are a they matchbox have 20 vision. cover band that relies on the fact that they look exactly like Matchbox 20, so people will be super pumped. Yeah, they yes. cosplay <laughs> Rob Thomas so and they, the rest of Do they Matchbox get introduced 20. by like, and now come to the stage, Matchbox 20! 20. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like they say the second one quiet as people are already applauding. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. And then in the crowd, you can hear people shout, you know, among the cheers, you hear them say, you sound just like Matchbox 20! And they're really excited. Is that... How you're supposed to properly... Is that the appropriate way to cheer on a cover band? Yes. I don't know, but you I once saw ABBA like... cover band, yeah. and somebody next to me said, you sound just like ABBA, and it just made me <laughs> laugh, and Amazing. I still think of it. I mean, it's a, I guess it's a its a good cheer, like is way that... to pump up that band. <laughs> is that more <laughs> of a like tribute? the highest compliment you can give a cover band. band? Mm-hmm. What? What? Is that... Is there a difference between a tribute band and a cover band? And is a tribute band where they put on the personas of that band in addition to playing their songs? Yes. So, so what it sounds fun. like, what I'm Tribute gathering, band. is that this band just enjoys playing Matchbox 20 covers and then are maybe accidentally a tribute band because they happen to look oh. exactly like Matchbox So they're not actually yep. cosplaying as Rob no. Thomas and the gang. Yeah. Yeah, it just well, happens Robbie naturally. <laughs> just like you start to look like your pet. Robbie you and know? the boys. Robbie and the mm-hmm. boys, which is what they call themselves now in 2021 because of the success of yeah. Matchbox 2020. Right, yeah. <laughs> they call themselves the Robbie smooth and the smooth crew. Wow. The smooth, Can't oh. wait to get to these ratings. <laughs> right, I forgot that was the whole point of this. <laughs> Dan, uh, you're up first. Yeah, I saw this movie a few... I definitely didn't see this movie until I think I was an adult. I feel like it was one of those movies that my wife, no big deal, Wow. Had me watch at some point because she was like, you haven't seen Clueless. OMG. You should see Clueless. Full disclosure, my wife has been furious that we haven't done this for Respect Listener Opinion Month every single year that we've done Respect Listener Opinion Month. Yeah, so it, It's been in the top three for the last three years, I think. Yeah. Mm. Wow. It's the, it's the Joe Biden of uh, Respect <laughs> Listener Opinion <laughs> nominees. <laughs> like, they finally made it, baby. Yep. Um, I remember liking it, but I also remember thinking, like, this is of a specific time and maybe was not intended for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I remember being, yeah, I remember enjoying it, but also being like, this movie is weird (laughs) and not at all what I was expecting. So I'm going to say a cowardly three Matchbox 2020. Oh, that is cowardly. Mm. Great. Mm Mm-hmm. Beth. I uh, I have just watched it recently, but as we all know, my memory is terrible, so I, I don't know how accurate it is. It's as if I watched it 20 years ago. 2020 20 years ago. 2020 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I, but I do remember feeling like it was it had kind of a nostalgic vibe to it, even though I had never seen it. Like It reminded me of other movies like 
um, Legally Blonde or, you know, like things that when they're on TV, I'll just watch them because they have that kind of feeling to them. But also it did, I think it has some moments where it maybe uses some words that we would not use anymore or like, you know, the 90s. So um, I'm going to say four. Um, ooh, late bet. There's going to be at least one uh, m- like moment of homophobia or transphobia that we're going to get bumped out about because it's a teen movie from the 90s. Yeah, it seems... Oh, there's definitely a a boy that is not interested in her that she is like hitting on very hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see how that plays out. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So, okay. did you actually say a number before Four. I interrupted you? Okay. Four. <laughs> Sorry. I. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Rob <laughs> Thomas singing <laughs> this song. He does. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he does Seems like that, he should though. Pretty much does. It's yeah. Um. Since I've seen this movie and I have no fondness for it in particular. Yikes. And I can only remember nice stems. <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't, I guess I don't think I'm going to care about it at all. Two. Wow. wow. Polly. Yes. I feel I think I saw this in theaters. And right, enjoyed yeah. it and was probably about the right age. Mm-hmm. I feel like there were very few movies that were made for me. So I'll probably feel pretty excited about that. I still think of a couple key moments and me and my friends will still say, I'm going to take a lap before we commit uh, when we arrive at a party. And that's Dude. from this movie. Good line. Yep. It's from this line. Uh, there's a moment where she worries about the lighting design. Mm. And it's like crafting a lighting design and like dropping some cookies in the oven and stuff. And I still think that's really funny. So for all these reasons, I'm going to be Beale Baggins, Beth's boyfriend, Bone Butcher. (laughs) Bone Butcher. I don't know. I can't remember the whole thing. I'm going to be Beale Baggins Bold 5. Five. Five. Wow. Matchbox wow. 2020. Wow. That is a bone butcher. Which is Matchbox 100 hundreds. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh. <laughs> there you go. There you go, math nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Their brains just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we're going to press pause, go watch Clueless, and we'll be right back. Uh, uh, um. Hey, listeners. This is the middle of the show. Yeah. Uh, you know, we like over here at Totes Recall, we enjoy a little thing called people listening to the show. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this about how podcasts work, but the more people listen, the more successful. Am I saying that word right? <laughs> the more successful the show is considered to be. <laughs> so what we'd like to present to you, our current beloved listeners, is what we like to call a Totes Recall Challenge. Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> challenge. <laughs> this recall. month's... Oh. <laughs> this Totes month's Totes challenge. Recall Challenge <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> is to tell one, one, Single friend or more, <laughs> but the challenge, the minimum reach of the challenge. One mm-hmm. friend about this show who you're pretty confident is not currently listening to this show. <laughs> hey, maybe there's a particular episode that you love that you could point them to. Maybe there's a particular bit that you think that person would especially enjoy and find mm-hmm. entertaining. Maybe your friend is like, oh, a bunch of people just goofing about dumb movies. And you can be like, hey... Sometimes they talk about real stuff and bum themselves out in the middle of the show. <laughs> I don't know. You know your friends better than we do. Yeah. Hey, can I add to this? Yes. I've had an idea for a long time called First Impressions. Mm. Is this part uh, of the challenge? Oh. It's part of the challenge, challenge, challenge. Uh, for bonus, have them call our phone number and leave their review of their first impressions yes. of the show. Yes. And... We will either play that or we'll transcribe it and do it in the voice of anyone they want. So, Ooh. like Nick Cage wow. or another yeah. person. It's like a it's like a challenge to us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a challenge. Challenge. Right back challenge. At you. a challenge, a back at you challenge. I met challenge your challenge, challenge, and I went one step further. Yeah. But we'll take just the first half. Back at you challenge. Back, back at, at you. I love it. 
Let's see. And that phone number is, of course, six one two a zero nine. Your challenge is to get your friend to figure out what the number is based on that incredible theme song. Again, you know what. You can always go to the website. Yes, it's right there. Dot com. Great yep. challenge. Go to that website. <laughs> Speaking of uh, great choices made by people listening to the show, we'd also like to do a little something we like to call showing your names and lights in audio form for one of our patrons. We're going to shout them out right now, and someone else is going to have to say it first because I've already forgotten what it was. <laughs> Danielle. 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 Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Your <laughs> challenge has been <laughs> to have done that, and you passed. You won the challenge. Yeah, great name. Great respect we just showed you. <laughs> yes, and great choice to be a patron of Totes Recall, which is continuing right now. Ow. Pew, pew, pew. And we're back. We just watched one hour and 37 minutes of Brittany Murphy being adorable mm-hmm. in Clueless. Yep. Yeah. Checks out. Agreed. She's in this along with other people, but before yes. we get too deep <laughs> to the other people that are in this, uh, we have a segment here on Totes Recall that... Okay, I think I've heard of this. I'm pretty sure this is a segment that is... Everybody's like well, well regarded. Talking yeah. about it. <laughs> well, I just saw. I just saw it win the finishes. Yes, the film oh, awards yeah. uh, were last. Yeah, we night. got a nice write up in, in magazine. Yep, and uh, uh, <laughs> all the leafs, all the little curvy leafs are yeah, on this got a, award. Yep, I just got a congratulatory mm-hmm. call from. <laughs> it's 60 second summary everyone loves it everyone is clamoring for it right now they're clamoring they're clamoring they're mm-hmm. they're Toads waiting they're they're clam are clamoring we'll go to the heavy, clam heavy clam bake heavy clam bake <laughs> heavy clam bake they're heavy clamming clam bake. they're clamoring mm-hmm. they're clamoring it's a heavy clamor and bake we'll yep. talk about that maybe. maybe if not watch the movie yep. hey clueless hey watch the movie um uh, okay <laughs> great um Whose turn is it? Do we take turns? I'll do it. (laughs) Go for it, Dan. (laughs) Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. (laughs) And go. Okay. Alicia Alicia Silverstone (laughs) is rich. She lives in Beverly Hills. She's high school. She's got a rich friend. They're rich together. And she's got an almost brother who's cares about the environment and wears flannel and listens to the Counting Crows and Radiohead. He's there, too. She's got a dad. He's a lawyer. He yells a lot. He's great. A new girl comes to school. She's like a, like a, like a New York burnout. 30 seconds. Oh, shit. Alicia takes her under her wing, transforms her. She likes a skater that doesn't like a skater. Men are creeps. In the end, everybody ends up with who they should be. After some confusion and hijinks, the hats are insane. Ten seconds. And there's a wedding of teachers. <laughs> uh, I nailed it. Time. <laughs> Fit that in just under the 60 seconds. <sighs> you wow. worked in time for a self-compliment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, I guess, I mean, I guess... By that metric, it's your most successful summary to date. The fact mm-hmm. you managed to fit in a self-assessment <laughs> of the summary. Uh, re- this oh. segment has received a glowing review from Dan DeQuan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's, that's the segment. Everybody loves yeah. it. And now I we've mean, done it's it. It's pretty good. I think you pretty much. I mean, I think you, you summed pretty Captured well. a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think the over... Overarching theme was that Alicia Silverstone tries to is a helper and tries to help people both by making them eat well, um, by getting them coupled up, uh, and in the end, additionally, uh, by throwing a clothing drive. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's accurate. Yep. But also, like, are we? 
again, I don't know how much this is based on the actual uh, source material that it's adapted from, but like, at least in this movie, we're supposed to sort of accept that like she's doing good, but in a very, I don't know, she's an odd character because like it's not necessarily like she's still actually like doing the stuff she says she's gonna do. But it's like sort of self serving. Yeah. But maybe a- not as much as a different comedy <laughs> would have it be. Right? Yeah, no, I think there's definitely that journey within it where she learns that she had been doing some pretty self serving things and figures out how to do less of that, right? Mm. Which is why the clothing drive is important. Right. Because, you know, it doesn't have an ulterior motive. But I think also the movie does a good job of pointing out that you know, that relationship with her dad and the way she tries to take care of other people, mm-hmm. like her motivation is good. She's right. just wrapped up in all of this. Yeah, I don't know. Like... She's a fabulously wealthy teenager. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I don't know where our expectations should be. Uh, yeah, I guess that's maybe where part of that kind of comedic disconnect comes from is like she is. It's not that she's not like genuinely trying to help people but she's coming from such a place of privilege and shelter that like you know you're also just kind of like uh, okay <laughs> like i guess that's nice yeah i mean i yeah. feel like part of it i mean a major part of it is that Brittany murphy's character ty ty right ty. yep um mm-hmm. is like doesn't really need her help no like she's not at all completely <laughs> like she knows who she is she knows yeah like what she wants. And so the fact that she's that um, Cher is like taking her under her wing is kind of like it, it shows that her helping other people is self-serving and kind of like naive. Right. right. Like she's maybe got some self imposed blinders on. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah, like you're right. Like when they first introduced Ty, like she's already pretty self-assured and she's mostly just pumped that she has made friends. Yes. Yeah. Like she's not really like, Oh, thank God. She's more just like, Oh cool. Yeah. I'll hang out with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And seemed perfectly like content with herself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's pretty self-possessed. It's pretty awesome too. Yeah. Cause I think this is definitely a parallel in Emma where basically Cher accidentally creates a monster. She oh. takes somebody who's awesome already mm. and transforms her into someone who's pretty self-centered and kind of popular and vapid. Right. And, and mean to the skater boy. Oh, Travis. See you oh, later, Travis. boy. Oh, nice yeah. reference, Molly. Yeah. You're welcome. I mean, it's like Time a decade too late. <laughs> Too late for whom? Great, great point. <laughs> yeah. Great point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Time but you know what I'm saying? So like, so yeah. She, could yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what did you say? What did you do? Ty walked so Avril could run? So we are, okay, I just want to be clear oh, that the official word. position of the Totes Recall podcast <laughs> is that Avril Levine's whole deal, yeah. like her entire like pop culture persona was founded upon Brittany Murphy's character in Clueless. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Dan. That's well, insane. She loved a skater <laughs> boy, and then she said, see you later, boy. But no, she, she did see him later. I am no. not familiar enough with Avril Lavigne's oeuvre to know Thank if there's you. like a whole album <laughs> where she's like, I met someone, and she made me posh, and then I decided to go back to my old style mostly, but also made yeah. friends along the way. I married we... you the guy from that Canadian band. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. I mean, there's also <laughs> the internet being full of insane people uh, perpetuating a myth that there's yes. a fake Avril that took Correct. over at yes. some point. Yep. So the yes. themes of transformation are also present okay. in her life. Okay. Which we see in this Sir. Clueless movie. Can we bring it's this back to how Brittany Murphy is... Brilliant. Yes, Somebody it is home. complicated. Someone at I hear home you is Beth. laughing so hard at my Avril Lavigne joke. But <laughs> is that an Avril Lavigne song? <laughs> yeah, doesn't she have a song called It's Com... It's gonna be so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like yeah, come on, That's guys. Avril Get into it. <laughs> I only know skater song. <laughs> skater boy. Skate song? There's also the one that she's like, I don't like your girlfriend. Oh, oh, no, I know that right. one. Never mind. Like I know that one. Yeah. She's like, so whatever. <laughs> I'm like... Oh, wait, no, it's the other way around. Doesn't matter. We'll get... 
don't yeah. sue us, whoever owns the rights to that music. Okay, Hopefully bringing ever. it back to how Brittany Murphy is brilliant. Oh, so good. Brilliant Murphy, more she like it. She never yeah, changes right, her <laughs> accent or her affectation very much, Mm-mm. but she tweaks it just enough that she goes from like the most adorable, fun, goofy person to like super judgy mm-hmm. and posh. Yep. It is amazing. Yeah. Marissa Tomei ran. Like her sick so burn is so good. Yes. Okay. Oh, Dan. <laughs> wow. They have the same uh, energy. Marissa I feel they do have similar energy. Uh, my cousin Vinny yeah. character. And oh, yeah. I'd agree Ty. with that. Yep. Yeah, but they're both great. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do both. They're like very self-assured in that they are willing to talk some trash mm. when they need to, but are also, you know, looking for some positive associations with their peers yep. like they don't want to be treated uh or neglected or my point is marissa Dan, Tomei's character happening? walked <laughs> so that pretty Murphy's character could i would say they're both running they're, they're both running to describe yeah. kind of like a um what's the a relay race What's the thing where you hand off a baton? That's to a relay race. Yep. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Relay race. So we got Marissa Tomei is handing the baton right. yeah. to Brittany Murphy, who hands the, the baton torch. to Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne, <laughs> yes. who hands it to... Mm, someone. Katie a team. That we Tweet at us, uh, Zoomers. <laughs> Who's the yeah. fourth? Who's the leg of this relay yeah, race? Yeah, exactly. Who brings it home on this relay race? <laughs> so what is called a leg? What? <laughs> isn't, isn't the last person to relay race called a leg? Aren't they all legs? They all have two legs, generally. Not always. <laughs> Check myself. I don't know. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know no. how we can so thoroughly reveal our <laughs> ignorance about movies, music, and sports <laughs> in one three minute conversation. I mean, yeah, it's almost like Brittany Murphy's character walked so that this <laughs> podcast could run. <laughs> oh, are we? We're the leg. <gasps> oh, we are the fourth nice. leg all along. What anyway, feel? this is about the movie Clueless. <laughs> Brittany Murphy's character Ty is amazing. Yeah. She she uh, crushes. God, she, yes. absolutely crushes. There's a scene in the moment that I was like, "This rules." She's the best character in this movie. Is when they're in the diner and she hears "Rolling with My Homies," and she gets really <laughs> yeah. sad about it, and then just starts like slamming her head against the table. <laughs> And D is just like, okay, okay, like legitimately <laughs> concerned for her. That's great. Uh, yeah, Didn't she I just, say? She went on such did. a journey. I love it. Didn't I say about Rolling with the Homies? You did. And that, that Britney's sad Rolling with the Homies oh my is God. one of the most I, beautiful yeah. comedic moments with her little hand motions. Yeah. yeah, I had no appreciation for what you were saying. Yeah. I was genuinely surprised that it came up at least three times. <laughs> at least right? three times. See? Yeah, there's a there's an energy to this movie that I couldn't handle. <laughs> and, but somehow Brittany Murphy like matched it, but but like I could focus on what she was doing. Mm-hmm. And like she could corral the energy of this movie into a relatable human that yes. made sense to me. Yes. Whereas I mean, she was almost every other character I was like what is happening? What are they doing? What are they wearing? How are they moving? Where yes. did they come from? Where are they going? Yes. yes. <laughs> Dan, What's happening? How old are you? No, I agree with all of this, and Get it's great. My... It's great. I see it as a positive. But I also agree oh. that Brittany Murphy is probably the most like full. Like she is. If you were to tell me without like if I had not seen this movie and you were to tell me like the subtext of this movie is that this is actually a different planet. That Brittany Murphy has come there from Earth, I'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. The hats would make more sense. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody's. <laughs> yes. The whole school has matching outfit day. Like when they're doing <laughs> tennis, everybody's in black and white and they just knew I to think do that's that. Their gym uniform. No, that's their gym uniform, they bro. They have to wear black and white. Didn't you have that at your school? Uh, it was like gold and blue. Go Eagles. There you go. <laughs> we had to wear orange t shirts and black shorts. You'd wear orange specifically? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's Orioles. wild. They had school issue like onesie jumpers. No. That no. were like shorts, shorts, and short sleeves. No. But they just buttoned down the center. It no. Was like a singlet? Rough. Like a, 
Well, when you say singlet, I picture a wrestling outfit, yeah, and it was not like right. that. A romper. Yeah, it yeah, sounds it was like, more a like a romper. Okay. Yeah, this was and this I, was required for phys ed. It was like what was sort of offered slash required, but they didn't actually make us do it. Huh. But kind of, mm. I just remember changing in and out of them a few times, and just feeling like there was no less flattering. Mm-hmm. Feeling yeah. than being in that green polyester outfit. Ugh. Wow. Ugh. I want to just chat for a quick second before we get too far away from how Brittany Murphy was the rock of this movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, she say, walked so that Dwayne the Rock Johnson can run. Yes, <laughs> she sure did. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No question. Um, because I felt like the other characters were not nearly as consistent. Agreed. Except for the dad. Lawyer dad oh, was 100%. Mel. Yeah. Mel and, and we really need to talk about him in just a oh, second. Oh, we will. Um, but like even, even Paul Rudd <gasps> had some real flat moments. And sometimes Alicia Silverstone's performance just was Confusing. amazing. And then other times it was like there was a disconnect between the line she was saying and how she was saying it. Um, although I will say little behind the scenes and this, I learned when the movie came out, this is not a recent thing. There's no reason to have a theme song. Okay. Okay. Um, but Molly learned about a movie when it came out. (laughs) 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 She happened to read something in Reader's Digest. (laughs) 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 And then she got a membership to the AARP (laughs) and she realized that she was only a teen. Boys <laughs> in the Soviet Union learning things about boys. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, Molly? <laughs> oh, wow. Fun fact? Fun fact. Um, you'll notice in the uh, scene where she's in debate, she keeps, she's supposed to be talking about the Haitians, yes. but mm-hmm. she keeps talking about the Hadians. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. She just misread that. No. That wasn't like a character choice. No. Yeah. No, but the director oh, was like, everybody shut up. Like, you could tell us people were like, oh, should we tell her? And she was like, shut up. That's so <laughs> embarrassing. Oh, but it also is, But isn't amazing. that so sweet? Like, I mean, because then I saw an interview with Alicia Silverstone and like, clearly she's not, I don't know. Like, she's just a, she's a regular person. Yeah. With yeah. like a reg, you know, and, and, you know, we all have gaps and especially if you read. And you like I I feel that too, right? Like there are lots of words that I still feel oh, like yeah. like epitome, and there are a bunch of them that if you read them, and have only read them exclusively for a long time, it is very hard to remember how to pronounce things. Absolutely, but and also I English. I mean, I guess that's probably a French word, but mm-hmm. English is partially it's based full on of traps. French, and uh, the expansion of Western civilization is a. Eternal nightmare. Anyway, yep. English yeah. is one of the most ridiculous <laughs> and stupid languages in the world, and I feel sorry I for anyone who has to learn it secondhand. And I also, I get it when even native speakers are yeah. flummoxed by parts of it. Fun, maybe fact about English that I think I learned from a podcast. Dan was Dan listening was to a podcast that was in Oz. <laughs> 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 One of the reasons that English is so messed up is that yeah. old English and middle English and the older Englishes were a second language for many people. Mm. And when you when that I think happens, you've said this before, really? Oh, pulling a real yeah. chase here. And when that happens, yeah, I think so. The rules get mushy, mm. right? Because I was going to say it, oh, really? and I thought, no, we've already said it on this podcast. Well, yeah, check out. I think Lexicon Valley, and I think the episode about Creoles and Pigeons. Yeah, because I was really upset that you listened to a different podcast. (laughs) Wow. And then you were like, it's about trees and birds or something. Okay. But here's a language fact. Can we take a moment to appreciate, like, how un conventionally good molly's memory has been this episode <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, i feel like i feel like you've been picked you've picked up on these very specific <laughs> things and it's very out of character <laughs> no no it's very in character so for example mm. i remember things from middle school that no one else remembers but i don't remember broad themes of things sure or like characters names mm. i see mm-hmm. especially though for movies because Unless something really like 
sticks with me and I use it as an example later Mm -hmm. or like from this movie, say stuff like take a lot before I commit. Um, Yeah, it just, it leaves me. And in this movie, it's before we commit to a location. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's true. It's a good line. Which makes even more sense. Speaking of things Mm -hmm. that we've talked about before, I think on our, um, (laughs) (laughs) our, 10 Things I Hate About You episode, mm. we talked about how Clueless <laughs> uses a lot of different vocabulary words. Oh, like, we did. A, oh, they, they do. She uses a lot of words. And it is kind of a confusing thing because I feel like sometimes she uses them incorrectly and sometimes she uses them correctly. And I'm mm. not sure if it's trying to say what it's trying to say about her use of language. <laughs> It kind of reminded me a little bit of that scene at the end of the premiere of My So-Called Life, where what? Angela Chase um, has had this really interesting night okay, where she's you are been... blowing my mind tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is unprecedented. Molly, Our you've been like... is we can't remember things. <laughs> also, your personal brand is that the facts you bring to the second half of this podcast are from reading Wikipedia. <laughs> And you're just tossing shit out yeah. from your memory. Well, all of us, you have the worst memory. <laughs> oh, this is a nightmare. <sighs> I apologize to listeners that this episode that is supposed to be about respecting you has gone so far off the totes recall you know and love. I don't even anyway. know. Angela Chase okay. is on her bike, and there's a moment where she just like reaches her arms out and mm-hmm. tries to balance. I can do that. Okay. And <laughs> Angela Chase rode her bike so that you could ride your bike. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the the point is it's such this moment of like, yeah, when you're a teenager, it's not like you are 16 all the time. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're 10 and sometimes you're 20. And then sometimes you're just the average of those two. Yeah. Have I said this 15. before on the no. podcast? No. Okay, great. I was just laughing because I think the person, the last person to run a leg of a race is an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> I nice. think. So that I just right. <laughs> I wasn't yelling. <laughs> anchor. Anchor. <laughs> anyway, yes. I'm so sorry. But you are correct. The average of ages makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it did feel like. Yeah, I, I mean, I do feel like that was maybe somewhat intentional where like there were, I mean, there were especially some scenes, some of her scenes with Paul Rudd. I definitely felt like it was sort of like, she is a teenager who is trying to show how smart she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, she's not, not rather, you know, she's like clearly like not, not smart. Like she has a very good, like she's a weirdo and she has very specific, uh, priorities, Mm -hmm. but like, she's clearly like pretty well read and like, clearly has a very robust way of speaking and speaking as someone who was also well read mm. and had a robust right. way of speaking right. i can guarantee no no hold on this she circles wishes back- she were- <laughs> this circles back around i can confirm that at that age you definitely use words very confidently while not necessarily 100 percent being sure you're using them correctly yeah it's a yeah. little bit like uh bill and ted too they do that mm-hmm. where they like confidently yeah. use word big words wrong i mean and I just used the word leg very... very confidently earlier in the podcast. That's true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> and Good I word. don't think I meant leg. I honestly don't know if it's anchor either, but... Hey, no, relay right. racers? It's, a, it's yeah. the anchor. Okay. Tweet oh, at us. And it's a and leg of the race. Yes. I was going to choose a fun Twitter game. And you use legs to run. And Go ahead, leg. Lyndon. No, that's fine. Anchor. I was going to say, tweet the first part. And then get your friend to tweet the second part. Mm. And then get their friend to tweet the third part. Mm. And I'm then the get leg. the anchor to tweet, I'm the leg. Or the anchor. I'm the leg. <laughs> anyway, this is a great so, podcast. We're doing great. Yeah. Dan, do you realize that instead of saying well read, you said well read? Did I really? That's what I heard. Yeah, you that's did. That's what I heard. Hey, and I, I mean, thought, I mean, well read. Be well read. Paul Rudd well, is in this well, movie. Well, well, well. Did I ever tell you I saw him at Sundance? What? Wait. I'm sorry. Robert Rogers. Robert Rogers. Sundance <laughs> Film Festival. Ooh, Miss Molly Chase, I'd like to introduce you to my vampiric friend, <laughs> Mr. Paul Rudd. He is an eternal demon who. Will outlive us all and be the king of ash. 
<laughs> and death when the world is destroyed. And then I'm sure Paro is just like, hi, I'm Paul. Yeah. Um, we, speaking of Paul Rudd, we. <laughs> are we, are we just missing my story? Are you just moving wow, on wow, to wow, him? Wow, 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 There's wow, more to it? Wow, wow. Are you, are you messing with me right now? You think I'm I trying would to get just a, tell? I'm trying to get a Discord question there before we move too far past it, but sure. <laughs> okay, This go is ahead about the Molly Discord. meeting Paul Rudd. I actually did meet him. <laughs> actually, what's going to be funny is the whole story is I did just see him. Yes. You didn't meet him. <laughs> I did meet him, but he was wearing the cutest like beanie cap, Aww. and he was like hanging out with his comedy friends. Which I ones? Was, like, Any of just them? Just stand drinking coffee. I don't, who could say? Wow. Who could say when, Take you, that, when, you, when, you, when you see Paul Rudd, you <laughs> true. only see Paul Rudd. Yeah. And I'm sure is... he was like sucking their life energy passively. <laughs> so they all looked all like wrinkly and, you know. Such, such a dream. Yeah. I have another story, but I'll save it for later. Is it also about Paul Rudd? Yes. Oh, nice. Ooh. Teaser. Did you see him okay, I'll else? go ahead and tell you now. So I had a colleague at work who looked a lot like Paul Rudd. Uh-huh. And uh, we had to sort of tease him about it. Hey, you look a lot like Paul Rudd. Okay. And then one day, like all this film production came to Atlanta and they needed a stand in for Paul Rudd. Yes. And my friend got recommended. Yes. And he did it. He did the whole day. And it was him and a stand in for Jennifer Aniston. I love it. And so he had Is this that, great picture uh, with Paul Wanderlust? Rudd and stuff. Wanderlust. Yeah. Might have been. Yeah. It must have been. Take yeah, it must have been. Um, and yeah, he said everybody was super nice and it was very, very funny. Did he meet Paul Rudd? Yeah. Was Paul Rudd uh, nice? They got a picture together. Oh, that's Yeah, fun. totally nice. Like, that's he's fun. exactly like, the same. like, have you ever heard anybody say anything bad about Paul Rudd? No. Maybe Other than the vampire thing. <laughs> 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 life anyway, that's it. I'm all out of Paul Rudd stories. Great. I'll stop right there. More Looks great Paul in a hat. Rudd stories. So awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's only so many Paul Rudd stories in the world today. <laughs> Molly has two of them. Manella and Rover and we're done. Oh, Are you doing boy. Matchbox 2020 or is it just yeah, a general just complaint rock kind of? Okay, got it. Complaint Where rock. she met Paul Rudd. <laughs> but not really. Just saw him at a distance. <laughs> and I said, Paul Rudd. Might have been my friend for you know, the <laughs> anyway, Dan, you were going to try to engage our fans by pulling in a... <laughs> Uh, we put out a call for questions on Discord, which you yes, can access if you're a patron um, on yes, the night we record. Patreon.com slash Tuts Recall. You can access it any time, but we post right. a question on the day. Yeah, and if you, don't, if you don't submit your questions on that night, we probably won't answer them, right. at least not on pod. But mm-hmm. Dan and Molly and Beth are pretty engaged on there, so they'll answer it eventually. <laughs> And I'll come in every two weeks and say something snarky. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for caring. <laughs> Amanda mm-hmm. says, Paul Rudd has an age today. Am I right? Correct. Oh, and this would... we teased earlier. What? We teased this earlier. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would. Now that I've watched this movie, I would argue that he has maybe aged one day. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's a little <laughs> right? fresh-faced. He's a little fresh-faced in this movie. He... Yeah. But he, he was looks... born in 1969. Shut nice. up. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, nice. <laughs> Stupid. He looks like a good 30, <laughs> and he's looked like a good 30 since he was probably for like 20. A thousand years. Yeah. But like he looks old he looks older than he should for this movie, but also I looks see. about like he still looks now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe that's what makes it confusing. Like if he looked significantly older now, you'd be like, "Oh, sure, it's young Paul Rudd," and your brain would be like, "Yeah, I guess he's like a college student." But because he looks so similar yeah. to fifty <laughs> whatever year old Paul Rudd, yeah, it's weird. I know yeah. it's like common. The internet makes fun of it all the time, um, but Which it's also thing? like they got a point. <laughs> like he looks real good. He looks. Oh yeah, yeah. Great. like like what is what is his secret? Yeah, is that what you're saying? Tell us your secrets, Paro. Tweet at us or Molly. You should check in on that friend of yours because if he still looks yeah. the same, like maybe oh. or maybe oh. he's aging and it's like a he's portrait like... of Dorian Gray type. Yes, <laughs> Do you think Dorian Molly's Gray. friend is the portrait? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, <laughs> and they just happen to film Wanderlust around the like midpoint where they were like in equilibrium. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wow. Wow. You got to check on your friend, Molly. <laughs> yeah. Bo, I'm going to call you. Make sure you're all right. Wow. But um, yep. how old is he supposed to be in this movie? Great, Great question. question. Is he like a freshman I or like a senior? Because that makes a real yeah. difference. She's dating a sixteen-year-old. Like, Ooh, if yeah. it were Jane Austen times, it would be fine. Sure. But it's not. It's 1995, which is not 1989, by the way. I think no, he's just is. starting college. <laughs> okay. Just starting? Do we think so? I, I'm getting. I get the impression that he's just starting, or like it's his first year. Because so it's like. 19? like he is in the dorms. Yeah. To the so. dorms. He's home on finals are coming up. So it's almost the end of the mm-hmm. year. Right. He's 19 at best. At best. Which I guess is better than I was thinking. <laughs> Wait, when you say at best, do you mean at most or at least? Um, at best for years. the age gap. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Because I just, he doesn't seem like a, he doesn't seem like a freshman. Hmm. No, yeah, I so agree. He's not to 20, a freshman. He's, like he's getting ready. He's thinking about what kind of lawyer he wants to be. I know some people are very serious in college, but that also feels like a senior year, maybe junior. year I mean, year you spend situation. a couple years with Mel. I suppose you kind of yeah. get that drilled into your head a little bit. Yeah, I feel like you're more likely to be like very into the idea of it when you're younger. <laughs> you get closer to graduating, and you're like, I don't know what I want to do. What am I doing? <laughs> what is this? I, yeah. Yeah. Still also, weird. He's, I get he's, the, even if he's 18, 18 and 16 is just very different worlds. I mean, I mean, there's definitely the difference of college and high school, which is a lot. Like, even, like, if you were, like, a junior, senior type situation and then right. one becomes a freshman, senior, it's yeah. still, like, boy, oh boy. weird. <laughs> that or, does not work out very often, no. statistically yeah. speaking. Or if you're, like, a... I don't know, thirty year old, whatever, Congress person. Ooh. Probably don't date a sixteen, seventeen year old. Yeah, you probably and you probably shouldn't just hang out at college campuses no, a lot. No, no, no. Probably not. Yeah. So yeah, so I think that when I first watched the movie, I remember being really surprised by the Paul Rudd uh, relationship. Or sorry, I guess this character's name is Josh mm-hmm. because you know they bicker at the beginning. And I remember thinking it was really kind of romantic and sweet. But now the whole time, I'm just like, how old is he? Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, how old is he? Um, P.S. Those were his clothes. Some of those shirts, the Amnesty International shirt and that hat. Wow. What a good his... man. What a good man. Oh, wait. What do you mean? Like, he just owned... he just brought those to set? He just wore them to set, and they were, like, perfect. How did you learn this? Internet. Be honest. Where on I, the didn't, I didn't. I didn't. But where on look the internet? At Wikipedia. Just tell me where on the internet. Just listicles. I don't know. I just did search. You don't for know. Red. Just did in the, use in the duck, duck, go? Yeah. What search <laughs> engine did you use? Google. Molly Google the Polly <laughs> Red. <laughs> Learning Google, about Google, our boy Polly Red. She probably Googled Google. how old is Paul Rudd and then learned some other fun facts. <laughs> I think Google, I picked clueless Paul Rudd age. Paul Rudd. Nice. Shirt. Is that his shirt? I love his shirt. <laughs> Which shirt are we talking about? Amnesty International shirt. That was a Paul Rudd a ridge? A ridge. Yeah, and he really regretted putting mayonnaise directly on the sandwich meat, which I think we could all relate to. How did, what are you talking about? How is that about? public knowledge? How did that end up becoming <laughs> something that you could just about. find on the internet? As opposed to the bread? <laughs> yeah, it's a real weird, like he has all that luncheon meat. Like first of Too all, much it meat. is an entire tray. It's like many pounds Too much of meat. just turkey. Yeah. Yeah. And just like maybe, too much kind meat. of loose in a drawer. I mean, maybe when they first. <laughs> they got a oh yeah, I mean the whole I the whole fridge situation is very confusing because <laughs> all we see from Mel's fridge is they have a giant bin of carrots and then an equal sized bin of lunch meat. <laughs> so, like, is the whole fridge just bin based organization? <laughs> that seems hard to clean. How did I miss I don't... this? Yeah, but he pulls out this whole bin, like oh, the man. whole meat drawer, and it's just it's like rolled up pieces meat. of <laughs> yeah. It's like individually kind of wrapped, but loose Uh-oh. meat. It's like he's running a Jimmy out. John's in there or something. Yeah, it's like <laughs> literally. It's like literally. Mal said to Lucy, right? Is that was that the maid's name, Lucy? I think so. Yeah. yeah God okay. bless Lucy, by the way. Oh, yes. uh, just said to Lucy, like, go to the deli. <laughs> and just take it all. Yeah. Don't ask them to put it in a any butcher paper or anything. Get just take just take everything they have, put it in this bag, 
and then empty the bag into the fridge bin. Yeah. All the lawyers are going to so sit around in this tiny room. <laughs> Just eat loose meat while they check yeah, the put One on a computer. <laughs> loose well, part of me wonders <laughs> if they got like a big platter because they knew that they were all the lawyers were coming over to work. Maybe. Oh, and then they were like, then... well, where are we going to put this? And they just dumped it in the drawer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I that's the that. best explanation. <laughs> I mean, it feels very real meat. that they would have like a well set or like a well set platter, right? <laughs> Multiple kinds of meat. Uh-huh. Lawyers go for. Three out of the four. So there's just yeah, a the huge pile gone. of one kind of meat. Ham's and Mel's just like, wow, what am I going to do with all this roast turkey? <laughs> Lucy, just dump it in a bin. Oh, I got to go back on the phone and yell at my assistant. <laughs> oh, Ooh. Cher, you're so great. You're a wonderful daughter. I am actually seem like kind of a good father. Yeah. But also, I'm very intense all the time. <laughs> Get out of my chair. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, Cheers God. Mel, the dad, was so good. So good. Like, I loved how he, I just loved how he never lost his aggressive energy. But, like, have you guys, okay, have you guys seen um, that, oh, what is it called? It's like angry reaction guy or mm-hmm. something, or like furious reaction guy. It's this, like, yeah. young dude who's on TikTok oh, yeah. who just, like, watches other people's TikToks and he's, like, super complimentary, but does it in, like, this very aggressive way. I've seen that too. And it's delightful. Like, his catchphrase is, like, aggressively screaming gorgeous <laughs> uh he reminded me of that where like yeah like he never lost that intensity but like some of the things he said sometimes he would just be like like when Cher is talking about some guy that like she likes who doesn't like back with that same energy as it yelling at his like legal eyes, he's like how could they or something like that <laughs> yeah. like why wouldn't they yeah he must be an idiot i love it i love that guy he shows up a lot, usually playing a character similar to that, and he always crushes it as that character. So good. This movie takes place, um, as we said, in 1995, a year yeah. none of us bet. <laughs> what did I say? 94. Oh, Dan did. Ooh. Oh, I, so close. I, I didn't stick with my gut. Molly came out hot with an 89 while yeah. I was thinking like mid-90s, and then I, I brought mine down feeling mm. like, well, maybe Molly's she right. never listened to me on the year. And then you stuck with your year. This is the first time ever you've picked yeah, one year. This is an unprecedented Molly episode of Totes Recall. <laughs> this one's going to go down in the history books. Yeah. One year, several concrete memories, yeah. no <laughs> Wikipedia. Calling someone else out for repeating a story. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, talk about. I don't know. I mean, congratulations to... It's really Avril Lavigne. Ah, ah. Why do you gotta go and complicate a boy? <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, anyway, 95. This is very... very what's that, Molly? She said, well, I saying, cut this cut it. out. But she but wasn't she... talking. We were talking. <laughs> <laughs> She's telling us that this part is garbage and we should feel bad about ourselves. Wow. <laughs> just the, the big 90s energy that this movie brings oh God, is off the charts. Just incredible. People are skateboarding. They're scouting I mean, crows. First of all, the, the like font that yes. they use Ooh, throughout that the opening oh, credit. Beginning. On and the colors, point. the like lime green, and the, like, bright the wipes, purple. And, the yeah. wipes on the credits. So many wipes. I used that font on a website that I designed in 1996. Yeah. yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's... I don't know if it's if it's how this era was or the fact that this is like the beginning of my teen years mm-hmm. or whatever it is, but it, it feels like mid nineties is more a parody of itself <laughs> than most other eras. Ooh, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna disagree with you, but I am gonna say that the time you and I were in high school is a strong contender for number one. <laughs> late late nineties? Like late nineties, early two, like just yeah. the turn of the millennium is just like when you look back on that shit, you're just like, yeah. my god. But just like everybody looks like a caricature, and that's always how they look in movies in this era. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. It just is and that maybe... because it's your first time looking back on a generation mm. you participated in. Maybe did we participate in it though? Well, you picked your own clothes. Yeah, yeah but did I? I feel did like you... I had some some neon. 90s-ness happening at that time. I mean, I wore basically like the same pair of jeans and the same four or five shirts my entire yeah. like 
try, like every week of my life <laughs> for a long time until my sister felt bad for me when she got in high school. Yeah, you got your Massimo shirt. Like, she, you got yes, your Stussy exactly. shirt. Exactly. You got your Rusty <laughs> shirt. <laughs> yeah, you got your like. Just you got your decent through. college shirt that you're expected to wear to church, but sometimes there's it hasn't been laundry done in a while, so you wear it to school and you feel weirdly preppy, even though it's like probably not even that fancy of a shirt, but in your brain, because you shared a room with a grunge kid for <laughs> your entire childhood, it feels very out of place to be wearing anything that is collared, that is not a flannel shirt, that is just mm. wide open. Yeah. At any rate, what I was what I was saying is that maybe if you're looking back on this era, it's an era that you participated in, versus like when you see something from the '60s or '70s, you don't really have any mental yeah. touch points for that, sure. right? It could be. I feel like the thing that tells me it's a '90s movie right away is when you hear "Just a Girl" by No Doubt. Oh my god! <laughs> the soundtrack on this movie, single '90s movie, I swear. The so good. Soundtrack of this movie was amazing. Every time a song would come out, I'd be like, "Ooh!" Uh, I love how they, <laughs> I love how they decided to like show that Josh was a brooding college type by constantly listening to Radiohead. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. good. It and I didn't realize. And Counting I Crows. Wanna... I apologize. Yeah. There's yes. also a Counting Crows cameo. <laughs> Uh, I want to be a supermodel is also in Legally Blonde. Mm. Oh, yeah, that was like really fun to hear that one again too. Yeah, and then share. And it was the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, I it didn't was. actually it look was. at the credits. Okay, great. Oh, that was that was absolutely the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. <laughs> there are only so many prominent bands where a dude in a suit just dances to the side. That's okay. That blew my mind when I saw it. I was like, yeah. so he just. He's not. He doesn't play an instrument. He's no. just. He's like a hype just man. Out there skating. Yeah, he's just the. D- I think they called him the Boston. Wait, he's the Boston. I'm pretty sure. Like, I think they refer to him like as the Boston because he doesn't play anything. No, he's at every show. I saw them. Uh, I saw them at a festival once, and like literally, just the dude. I mean, it's a giant stage, so he could really fucking move at this festival. <laughs> and yeah, that dude literally just like skanked around for their whole set. <laughs> Is it, is it his job to like get people pumped up or like to show people know. how to I dance don't to know. the music? <laughs> I have no idea. I felt for the extras trying to dance because you know they weren't playing any actual right. music. Yeah, mm. and you could see that people have been instructed to like jump around, yeah. like they were dancing to ska. Yeah, but there were people who were clearly very tired and were just kind of like, <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah. do this like. Mm, sway in place thing yeah. it was fantastic yeah unless you were the guy who played christian which which point <laughs> you were fucking hitting your marks uh like just hypnotizing the audience with your moves yeah he exhausted me and i loved him I oh my god he, handle it yeah. i couldn't keep yes. up with him and he was only in like 15 minutes of the movie i literally at one point texted the group how is christian a real person <laughs> He comes in, he's dressed like friggin' Rebel Without a Cause. Yep. Yeah. Luke Perry. Yeah. Yes. Luke Perry. He's like he's like a slightly updated Luke Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Star of Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah. And um <laughs> and then talks about heavy clam bakes. Where are the heavy clam bakes? Oh my God. I couldn't Amazing. I just I couldn't keep up. And then the he's, moment that destroyed me and also made me fall in love with him for eternity was when <laughs> was when Elton was dancing with Amber mm-hmm. and uh, she was like, Christian, what do you think? And he like literally was just walked into frame. So his back is to the camera and Cher is like, <laughs> what do you think of Amber? He spins around, does a little lean on her, pulls his sunglasses down. And then I believe says Hagsville and then <laughs> yes. puts his sunglasses back up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it was like amazing. he was like I don't know like he like I feel like he was just geometry made manifest in a human body like he was just constantly like moving angles. his limbs at these very specific angles and points. Yeah, he's from oh, another incredible. time. And yes. He's great. He's uh, briefly we think he's going to be the love interest, but it turns out yes. he's gay, and so yes, which was actually Jared handled Kidd. better than I was expecting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when Donald Faison was like going down his list, I was just like, oh no, oh no, oh no. <laughs> but it actually never quite hit like full on pejorative. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and no yeah. one's right? like bummed out by it. Which no, no, they're just be. like yeah. share, don't do. But yeah, like it's only just like no share. You're what are you talking about? But like yeah. a, a movie of this time or any time, let's Oof, be honest about yeah. how right how movies work would be you know would level disgust at this character and that reveal yeah. uh, on some yeah. degree, but or treat it yeah, as like much more every of like, episode of The Office or Friends. Yeah, like would you would treat it more, more like a betrayal of shares, right? Like yeah. share would it treat it like share had been betrayed somehow yeah. or something. But no, and but, then they're buds, no. and they just cut oh, it and up. they're best buds. They're best so buds. Uh, she helps him buy incredible jackets. I loved every mm-hmm. jacket he wore in this movie. Yep, yeah. and he's the one who says nice stems, and it's not creepy, and there are no flowers. It's a little yeah. creepy, and there's flowers in the I very mean, next scene. Right. Okay. Well, if you're going to be oh. defensive about bets. But I yes. do like that in your brain, the stems. That's my gig. Were... I'm defensive about bets, okay? <laughs> this episode is unprecedented. <laughs> Beth, cut all this out. Beth, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just trying to make a joke because y'all looked so shocked and I felt bad. I didn't know what happened. It's like, did I actually upset you? So then no, I turned it impossible. on me. Is everything okay? We're so mad at emo. Are we okay? <laughs> We're also mad at each other. Yeah. <laughs> He was talking about her legs, though, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, okay. yeah. But I like that in your, I like that in your mind. He was talking about flowers because the flowers came next. So you just like put those two things together yeah. in your head. I like how your brain is like this moment in the movie was more clever than it. Yeah. Actually, well, how bold actually, just to like go up to someone right? and be like, "Hey, your legs are good." Like this is the first time he's met her. He's yeah. very confident. He's Christian, like Christian. the stars, movie stars of the. 50s. 50s. Luke, Luke Perry. Perry. Yes. Part of the Rat Pack. I know that Luke Perry was not. Sorry, did I say 50s. Rat Pack? I meant to say Rat Pack, not Brat Pack. Very different. Rat Pack <laughs> walked so that yes. Rat Pack could run. Yes. That is true. <laughs> and the Brat Pack jogged so that the, I don't know, Cheetah Girls <laughs> could run. <laughs> cheetah Girls. Cheetah like girls. Toby Maguire and those friends. Oh, Leo DiCaprio's Creep Squad? Yeah, oh, Creep, creep squad? squad. So yeah. they could, could like. Creep. Could creep. There you go. Yeah. And by, I mean, just because it's the 2020s, by creep, I just mean like he just, you know, he throws, he's like old Hollywood and throws women away once they hit like 35. 35? Well, that's generous. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> Paul Rudd, 35, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah Paul Rudd. <laughs> no, wait, if Paul Rudd, 35, is most people's 50. Hmm. No. Nah. Okay, maybe. I don't know. I'm lost. Wait, are Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio and Paul Rudd the same age? Probably. Oh, weird. No, Leonardo DiCaprio is a little younger. Is he a little younger? Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I did. Well, did you guys do that quiz to... a couple years ago? A, like, pick the Paul Rudd head? It's just like oh, 30 yeah. Paul Rudd heads from yes. different years, and you have to, like, Which one is up. younger, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. I did terribly. Me too. I did. Yeah. I feel like I got a C. Yeah. I wonder how he would do. Hopefully, great better. question. But it's wild. I mean, it's. It feels like one of those things on the internet that you're like, haha, but also like you can tell, but you can't. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like they it's like the thing about like oh my god, there's an old picture that looks like Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves is an immortal vampire. Yeah. But then in terms with the difference between Keanu Reeves and Paul Rudd, though, is like every picture of Paul Rudd is part of that bit. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like every single photo of him ever. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, no, he's an immortal vampire. Yeah. Well. So dreamy. I mean, he's a handsome man. Mm-hmm. Handsome man. There's uh, like a point where she keeps on saying that he's not handsome or he's not cute. He's not conventionally cute no. or something. Flannels. Radiohead. Mm-hmm. Baseball cap. Oh, because he's like uh not like I mean, I mean, he's Christian is her ideal her type, and yeah. Luke Perry. Yes. Okay. So she's yeah, saving her. She's saving herself for Luke Perry. It's in the script. Yeah. And Elton, yeah. who's a Ugh. yeah, he's like a thick '90s Timothy oh, yeah. Chalamet <laughs> older brother. <laughs> yeah, I I completely agree with Dan's assessment, even though it sounds insane. Look it up. Go look up Jeremy Sisto, Clueless, and then put the words "thick '90s Timothy <laughs> Chalamet older brother" in your head. <laughs> I think you'll agree. He nailed it. Yeah. Uh, he turns out to be a creep. He yeah, he's a real he, dick. Yeah. He sexually assaults her in the car, and then she gets mugged. I mean, he wears. I will say that the character before that, I mean, actually during that scene, is wearing like these incredible like 
I don't know, like r- below the waist sweater jacket things for like half the movie. I don't know. They're blowing my mind. Yep. Speaking of clothes, this movie yes. opens with oh, Cher running a computer program God. to pick out her outfit. Uh, Incredible. I lost my mind when it cut to that computer screen. Which is just like still images of tops and bottoms that she can page left and right on, and then it the computer tells her whether they match or not. Yeah. That's it. it oh, right? amazing. It is amazing. It's, and also, doesn't it feel weirdly out of place? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, I feel like they should have done more of that if that was like she's so rich she can do this kind right. of thing like her refrigerator should talk to her or something you know what yeah. i mean or like i guess the i guess the refrigerator equivalent is like the fridge is so big you can have an entire bin of loose meat <laughs> good point forgot about the and, loose meat and still have room for a bunch of orange juice and whatever else they drink in this yeah. movie. So when you open it, it says, would you like some orange juice and loose meat? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hello, Cher. Could I interest you in some orange juice <laughs> or perhaps some <laughs> loose meat? <laughs> well, and it was also inconsistent with later where she says, "I help me take Polaroids. I never trust the mirror. Oh, yeah. Alone? And then... what? <sighs> Wait, is, okay, now hold on. Maybe we can... Is that why she takes the Polaroids? She then feeds the Polaroids into her closed <laughs> Tron 6000? Mm-hmm. Maybe. Apparently, Amy Heckerling said that she's, the genesis of this movie was that she thought about how she thought teenagers were when mm-hmm. she was younger. And she imagined when she was a teenager, she was going to get to wear amazing outfits and just be rich and have just rich friends. Mm-hmm. And sure. like everybody's worst problem would be finding an outfit. And so yeah. she tried to create that world with a script. So I don't know. Maybe the computer thing just made its way in there and never got pulled out. But it's, I mean, it's weird. I love it. Like, it's so It's bananas. very proto-Tinder. Like, swipe right, swipe left. On your clothes, your own clothes. On your clothes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, like, any time, I mean, one, as we've talked about many times in the show, any time anytime computers are used in a movie, but especially... When computers are used, like right at the point where the internet was starting yep. to be a thing, and yep. normal people were even thinking about computers, it's always amazing because it's this kind of shit where it's just sort of like, "Hey, can we get can we get Don to just like render up some like JPEGs of some clothes, but then like make it look like Alicia is like controlling a program?" Don, what? Yeah, I, sure. I guess you guys you guys want to see this like you guys want to see this cool Chinese checkers game I made? No, no, Don, just 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 load up some <laughs> pixels of the clothes. Yeah. Okay, it's just it's it's my doctorate and it I just it's pretty cool. Yeah, okay, Don. I mean, maybe after, okay? Go back to the net. Yeah. Nerd. <laughs> oh, poor Don. Poor yeah. Don. Hacking so hard. He's acting so hard, <laughs> and they just want him to put in some clothes JPEGs. Yeah. Maybe it should be Amy or Hackerling. Bitmaps, even. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, they might I apologize. Just, yeah, there you go. By the way, she um, also directed Look Who's Talking, which is mm. the other movie yes. that we had seen. Amazing. She's an excellent... Not Wait, when did that movie you. come out? Uh, before this one? No. Okay. No, it's Wait, after. It's after? like 99, I thought, or 98. Look who's talking? What? No yeah, way. Look who's talking, too? Oh, I'm looking it up. I don't know. I'm lo- look at who's talking. Listen, I thought this came up. out in 89. All right, hold on. Let's just take a moment to appreciate that we're back, baby, because Molly has <laughs> no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Everything before this? Straight bloopers. Guess what year it was? 1989. Ooh. No! Okay, this actually makes sense, because that means that Amy Hackerlane started a professional relationship with Hank Crestcorn on that movie to create a terrifying baby puppet. Uh-huh. And then she was like, Hank, I have a character who owns one million clothes. And he's just like, oh, you know, we got this new inventory program at the <laughs> warehouse where you can just upload a picture of uh, the person you want to dress and it'll tell you if it matches. Does that... Please tell me that's something you need. I invested all of my money into this yeah. program. <laughs> my nephew Don made it. He's very oh, lonely. Don. <laughs> Don okay, no, I love this. So then, yeah, so then Hank got Don a job on set. 
And all Don got to do was, yeah, like, take Polaroids. Or they would hand him the Polaroids that yeah, they'd already yeah, taken of the clothes. Convert to a mm-hmm. bitmap. Bitmap, yeah. Just cut them out and scan yeah. them in. Oh, that's very hard. <laughs> hey, can we talk about the party? Yes, yes. absolutely. The parties, all, the parties where I fully lost my mind watching this movie. <laughs> really? Yeah. There's a lot happening. I couldn't follow what was going on. <laughs> I, have, I have an initial, I have an initial question before we get too deep into this. Was it supposed to actually be around Christmas? I don't. I don't what? Why? I remember because there was holiday there's decorations. There's Christmas decorations all over the yard. Oh. There's big candy canes. Brittany Murphy took a snowplan home. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, probably was Christmas in L.A. Okay. I just wanted to check because w- at first I was just like, oh, my God, why are there Christmas decorations everywhere? Because growing up here in the horrific tundra of the north, I just assume uh, that anytime there is no snow on the ground, it couldn't possibly be Christmas time. Yes. No. Yeah. Oh, yes. right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, okay. I'd forgotten about the Christmas decorations. But that makes sense, too, that the parents would be out of town. Yeah, it does. And that Paul Rudd would just be hanging out with a lady in his dorm room. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess so. That was sort of interesting dynamic between him and that girl. Yeah, I guess that was just to show, like, oh, he and Cher kind of are compatible because they all agree what the quote from Hamlet was. Oh, right, right. Or yeah. something. I don't know. So going back to the party, <laughs> yes. I thought it was so funny that they played Suck and Blow. <clears throat> Did y'all ever play that at a party? No. No. I no. didn't go to parties and was terrified of physical touch for most of my childhood. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so Suck and Blow is you take just a regular uh, I mean, cards. we saw it in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, do people, do our listeners know what it is? I bet our listeners are very cool and went to cool parties. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to explain it. Uh, I guess for the for the listeners who are you know, I guess hanging out with me <laughs> in high school. <laughs> well, anyway, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to like pass the cards around, yeah, and you have to like hold a card to your lips by sucking on it actively, and once you stop, it's going to drop. So yeah. then the other person has to whatever. Um, I played this at a post prom party. My wow. junior year. Nice. And it was the most hilarious, most fun game because none of us could stop cracking up. And once you start laughing, like you can't hold on to the card. Yeah. There were no shenanigans. Nobody dropped the card and then like kissed somebody Elton. like old Elton did. That was I really mean, I weird. assume you were all laughing because you were so nervous and yes. tittering about the potential of the card dropping. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you nailed it. Potential smooches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anyway, at my corner of the circle, uh, nothing like that happened. Maybe at other parts of the circle, things corner were going. I'm not sure. What? You sat in a circle to pass the card around. I'm just thinking about these shapes. Circles what don't shapes? have corners. What? <laughs> oh, my oh, God. God, Dan. It was Listen, weird, though. Hold on. Can I, I just, ask you? I just, no, can we talk about how old Dan is on this? Like, I feel like you're <laughs> stepping high. well outside the. Uh, conical, thirty-five. Conical, like, conical. that's another shape. Blooper, blooper. That's a blooper. But Dan, like you're just you're frustrated by the parties and you don't understand kids and you're <laughs> grumpy about that's, it. Can I present like, a theory? It's all true. Yes. Can I present a theory? Because this movie uh, presented like such a specific. Slice and social strata of California lifestyles. I think that there is some deep seated resentment mm-hmm. bubbling up in Dan's brain that wow. did not allow him to focus on the movie itself and instead considered all of those rich elitists <laughs> who maybe <laughs> didn't invite him to their cool suck and blow Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> suck and blow Christmas. Uh, well, this is uh, SoCal. It's a, basically a different state. That's a good point, actually. I accept that. I actually uh, accept that premise. I disagree. Molly, I have a question with you, for you. Yes. Okay. In your case, did someone literally just like come into a small group of you within a very crowded kitchen, just go, let's play soccer ball, and just immediately <laughs> shove a card in your face? Because that, that is what happened at this party. Crazy. It was like, hey, guys, everybody gather around. <laughs> Like they, ba- she barely gave them time to even like get ready. To for even it. say, yeah. what is that? <laughs> Everybody knew already. <laughs> I never yeah, heard I of it. Knew. 
I played Spit the Bottle like one time, army, right? And couldn't I spawn and I got the girl I liked and I just completely <gasps> shut down. Did you wet yourself? And looked at the ground <laughs> until she came over and kissed me on the cheek. And then I went Aww. home and felt bad about myself. Aww. That's so cute. <laughs> so you didn't wet yourself? I did not wet myself. Okay, just checking. Just with tears on the inside. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, probably the That's inside. So I don't sad. think I had access to external emotion at that point. Yeah. I um when I was in elementary school, we went to <laughs> we went to uh a park with my class. I'm and listening. I was in a fifth, sixth class, and Whoa. all the sixth graders were like, we're going to go over here and play spin the bottle. And I did not want to do that, and I sat yep. with the teachers the whole time. Hell yeah. And then oh on the way God, back, God. the boy that I liked called me a prude. Oh. <sighs> Harsh. I know. Beetlejuice, but also, how like, could you? Rude. That dude's probably a creep, right? Probably. Well, oh, yeah. and or he was trying to flirt with you, but he only had toxic masculinity yeah. as his also guide. True. It's true. Yeah. Mean he's don't not blame creep, us. Though. Yeah, now he could be a creep. Hey, yeah, I don't know. Best old crush he? from fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, cool it, cool, cool it. it. Stop calling women prudes. Yeah, hey, yeah. it's I'll their go choice. Base. All right, yeah. Just because they don't want to play your dumb bottle game. Yeah, or just because they want to bother the teachers. Yeah, just because maybe Beth wanted focused on her education yeah. and wanted to learn. Probably got a really good letter of recommendation for Ooh, middle school. Probably. Wow. And she hosts a successful regional podcast. <laughs> yeah. What did you end up doing, guy? Hey, guy. Hey, guy. What, you can spin a bottle? Good Ooh, job. Wow, yeah. so impressive. I'd like to see you monetize that, right? <laughs> Patreon.com slash my dumb bottle on the bottle guy. <laughs> right? We got to get that. Get on my that. Dumb oh, bottle. we do. Uh, trademark. I'm the bottle guy. <laughs> trademark, copyright. Let's give me a new spin off podcast. <laughs> Yep, I think we all agree. Uh, anyway, being a teenager is terrible. <laughs> Did you guys, as terrible as being a teenager is, and as not that <laughs> terrible as being this kind of teenager was, yeah. did you find it weird that, <laughs> like, she is robbed at gunpoint, but it's not yeah. really treated that tonally different from any other point in the movie? That's what I'm saying. We, I mean, we should acknowledge that we broke Molly. Oh yeah, Just blooper. Molly, Sorry, Molly back is on broken brand. <laughs> um, yeah, that was another thing. Like, just every it was everything was happening in this movie. She's yeah. like gets sexually assaulted, but it's still a goofy teen movie. And then she gets mugged and has to lie down. But lol, she's got a fancy dress. Yeah, she's mad about she it. She has yeah. the well, well, oh, well, I was right in the first half, but now I can't remember what it is again. Aria, uh, well, Aliyah, oh, Aliyah. Oh, Aliyah, Aliyah. Hmm. I and I thought that scene yeah. was pretty funny though cuz she's like kind of whining the whole time yeah. like ah. no it was funny that she did not seem to be actually like afraid of her life for her life at all she was yeah. more just like oh this is so inconvenient for me and <laughs> yeah. my dress he yelled at me yeah. like i love that she oh, yeah, that he yelled like... at me and he made me ruin my dress I her it, yeah. like those that? are one of those moments where alicia silverstone really just nailed it man mm-hmm. it was so good yeah yeah she's this character is interesting to me because she's like kind of a, on the surface, right? She's kind of like a vapid, rich, popular girl, which mm-hmm. typically in a movie like this is the villain. Mm-hmm. Um, like a mean girl or some other movie. I don't know. <laughs> mean uh, Girls 2. Mean Girls 2. <laughs> the mean is back, baby. Um, but in this one, she's not. She's... Mm-mm clueless but that extends both to like cluelessness over how i don't know how to move through the world what i don't know i don't quite know how to articulate it yeah she's like clueless in sort of like the ways of the world outside of her own kind of narrow scope of yeah, it but and not, then is also clueless yeah. about her love for her sort of her brother. Love who's for her sort of brother, who is no, definitely not her, not brother. her brother. And they make for that sure, very they, clear. They're, they're like, also, we're not siblings. We're saying it yeah. out loud right now so you know later that it's okay. Yeah, yeah. like there's yeah. literally a point where Paul Rudd's like, you know, what, you just want a brother type around? She's like, you're not my brother. <laughs> <laughs> underline, underline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we get a take that's more explicit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alicia, can you really enunciate the word brother? 
<laughs> but then really enunciate the word not before that. <laughs> not my brother. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Stacey Dash, just a quick mention that that is who we were thinking of. Yeah, we didn't remember her name, but it was the person we were thinking of who just sort of became like a weird Fox News presence for a while, who apparently also recently apologized for backing up uh, President Carnival Barker. But like, <laughs> that's what everybody is doing now that he lost. So mm. go fuck yourself. Okay. <laughs> right. That is not necessarily the views of the entire podcast, but no one else is talking. So uh, I agree. All right. <laughs> I can concur. So we had a lot of different bets for Bechtel Wallace. Yes, we did. Yes. They were, Molly, within the first five minutes, Dan Linden within the first 90 seconds, me, a pass before two men talked to each other, and Beth, two passes by the time Alicia Silverstone talks to a man. Yep. I lost. I did not. She talked to her dad first. Yep. Oh, right. Yep. 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 <laughs> I don't know I how I did. Within five minutes. I think Molly got it. I definitely yeah, didn't get it right. because uh, the first line actually spoken in a way that you're actually able to hear it was uh, Cher narrating the movie. So that doesn't really count <laughs> unless you want to, you two, Beth and Molly, want to say that she was talking directly I mean, to you. She spoke to me and to Molly, meaning that she did and speak to two passes. women before she spoke to them. Right, man. and you two spoke at the same time as the movie, which counts as being in the movie. Yes. If I understand how movies work. Yep, if you watch a movie and you talk at the same time, you're in the movie. You're in the movie, yeah. 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 You gotta get those royalties. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, those zids. Oh, and the teachers definitely did get together, and they were well played and fantastic. Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. Yep. And her name is Twink Kaplan. Great oh, name. what a good great name. Job. She mm-hmm. did do a great job. While Sean crushes as always, good job adults in this movie. Yeah, Agreed. all of them crushed. Oh, and good job DMV drive uh, instructor slash yeah. Messiah. Yeah, he was good. Fantastic. Was a good, that was a good like one day, one scene role for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a little concerned that the answer to did they bang for Donald Faison's character and D was in the front seat of the car while Cher was in it <laughs> after they pulled over after getting on the highway screaming because <laughs> just the way that was edited just made it seem like they were going for it right there. Yep. Uh, but like who knows? Speed Excuse me? Oh, like no, in speed. Yeah, exactly. Didn't happen in exactly speed like in way, speed. But... That is canon to the podcast. No one else talk. That is what happened in the movie Speed. <laughs> they banged right no, after no, crashing. No, I'm pretty sure I disagree. Out nope. very disagree. much. Beth, check the leave tapes. me in. Beth, cut everyone else b- out but me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut myself out to lose this argument. <laughs> it could happen. It could, but it's not going to. <laughs> Maybe you'll listen back and be like, wow, Dan really eloquently argued. Well, I guess position. Dan was right <laughs> all along. Several episodes later. I won't burden the listener with my voice or <laughs> ideas. <laughs> <sighs> well, before we get to our final ratings and reviews of the movie, Clueless, we read a review of our podcast, totesrecall.com, in the style of a character from... The movie we just watched. And we Please. have a review. What? And a plethora of characters. Is anybody feeling particularly inspired? <clears throat> I could try share. Please Great. do. Please do. Always a good time. Five stars for being able to talk about a movie for longer than the runtime of the movie and frequently be more entertaining than the movie. Five stars for ongoing reminder of the Bechtel Wallace test. Five stars for Hank Cresthorn. <laughs> Both ridiculous and thoughtful. It's a podcast I'll never miss. Listen and become a patron. Ugh, she's I you know what? That was Alicia really good. Silverstone. That was really good. Molly, that Hats was great. off to you. <laughs> no one can do you. I'm sure that actually was, everybody could. <laughs> I think that was actually <laughs> that was, that was really great. Good. Who's Pretty that? Good. Um thank you, KL Hunter. Yes. We thank you. you. Yes. Yeah, it was so nice. Thank that was you. Very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, did you think people got the meaning of it? Or do you think they were so confused by my accent? They loved they... it. Everyone loved it. This is a great Everyone segment. loved it. You're great. <laughs> Molly's great. Get those reviews in if you want them read in the impression of a character from a movie. Yes. 
And the last thing that we sometimes do is listen to a voicemail. Yeah. We have voicemails We have sometimes. a voicemail. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Hey, Mr. Uh, long time, first time. I am calling with a question. I've been thinking about this a lot. What would you call the Bechdel-Wallace test if instead of two women talking, it was two CGI animals? Because I feel like this is a, a topic that no one ah. covers. Um, I feel like there are a lot of movies that pass this. Um, and I'd like to come up with a name for it. Uh, it's uh, Bechdel-Wallace test, but with two animals. Um, thank you. Wow. Oh, man. My mind's blown. My mind is also blown. Um, thank you very much for that call, first off. Um, thank yeah, you. great call. Great we question. don't know who you are. You're a mystery caller. You're a mystery caller. First thank time, you. long time. First, thank oh, you that's first their time, name? Time. First time, yeah. long time? Okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> they slated it at the top. Um, God. My first thing that comes to my mind is Meow Wallace. Oh, I like Who's that. Who's Wallace? Like, well, like Wallace, Wallace and, and Gromit. Gromit. <laughs> Duh. Wall- but Gromit doesn't talk. And Wallace is a guy. Wait, listen. <laughs> my first thought was Meow Wallace. Okay, no bad first thoughts. No, no bad first bad thoughts. First thoughts. All good. I didn't hear any of you share a thought. <laughs> I, Bark, was th- I was Bark thinking Dale. something about Porcupine. Barkdale. Bark. Barktail. Bark- Bark- Bark Bark tail (laughs) meow. Okay, okay. (laughs) Not bad, not bad. No bad second idea. Uh, Are there any other qualifiers? Like the Beckham Wallace has like a set of qualifiers. Well, meow meow, because then it would be two cats, and cats are often girls talking to each other. Wait, wait, so (laughs) all cats are girls. I All thought we were talking boys. about animals that spoke <laughs> actually spoke to each other. Oh, the caller first said CGI animals. Bechdel Wall is for CGI animals. So I assume all the other rules are the same. So two CGI animals talk to each other about something other than... A human? Um, a human? human? Sure. I like that. Oh, I get it. Okay. I mean, so CGI like Zootopia animals. passes all the time, every scene. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Well, Zootopia. Barktail did not pass the Barktail meow. Gar, gar, <laughs> meow meow <test. laughs> Garfield, Gar, meows. Garf- what? Garfield and <laughs> Garfield Heathless. Heathcliff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Heathcliff. Just say Heathcliff at that point. Garfield Heathcliff. Should we just throw in Avatar? Because that's like the most famous CGI. <laughs> Those are cat people, not animals. Okay. What? They, which they which movie are CGI culture, animals in? They bang each other. There's Air, be buddies. Like... <laughs> Air, Air buddies. Air buds and spuds. They're like C- they're like CGI enhanced puppies. Air right? buds and spuds McKenzie's. I still like buds McKenzie. Meowless, okay, I'm, Barktail Meowless. I'm gonna throw my hat in. Yeah, I like which that. I am because I like I'm a white man. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's the best one we've come up with. Barktail Meowless. And I mean I, that's true. Well, this one didn't pass. I'm trying to think what movies do pass that aren't any of Air Buddies. Air Buddies, right? Yeah. Do isn't the, the aren't the isn't the original Air? I mean, I guess I haven't seen the Air Buddies. I assumed that it was a bunch of just footage of like puppies with peanut butter in their mouth, right? I think they do some what? weird CGI thing with their mouths so they move oh, yeah. realistic. Oh, They're like God. real For dogs sure. with like. CGI mouths. Oh, that's terrifying. But like yeah, G-Force, that one about the gerbils. Yes. Oh, yeah. Isn't that or... just a Kia commercial? Huh? What? <laughs> Maybe that Kia commercial where the two hamsters are driving a car. Yeah. I see. <laughs> what, I is the first, dancing, what is the first ever pass of the Barktail Meowless? First animal? ever? Yeah. Where like two animals talk to each other? I thought it was CGI animals. It has this to be is... CGI? I don't know. It was CGI Everybody's... at the top and then... No, the CGI was removed at the end of the I voicemail. See. Mr. Home, Ed talks. Homeward Bound? Probably Homeward Bound. We should probably check it out. Or check it out. You know what? No, I think that's okay. okay. We should probably watch Homeward Bound I at really some point. Just to be sure. Just to be sure. I think right. probably, I think probably that enough. movie doesn't need to be watched. I think I mean, probably. I guess they're not CGI animals, so. No, they're yeah, real animals is... going through real things. Yeah. Okay, so home. then does... Does does Kong versus King Kong versus Godzilla? Godzilla pass. Do they They're talk CGI to each other? animals. Do they talk? I mean, to each they other? communicate. They, well, they have to introduce themselves. Spoiler themselves alert. All. You Spoiler alert. I am King Kong. Other? Hello, I am Godzilla. <laughs> We're not talking about the humans. <laughs> we know their names. 
That's true. They, we do know their they're names. They're named characters and they communicate with each other. Okay, sure. I mean, is it essential for this test that they speak in English or speak in human talk? Mm. They just need to communicate with each other. They need to understand each other. I mean, yeah. at least in that movie, like, I, again, I haven't seen it, but I assume they're you definitely do. not talking about a human because, as Ken Watanabe pointed out in the first movie on this entire franchise, they don't give a shit about us. We're just these, like, non, non-essential, we're like bugs that are just kind of, like, around, and we should respect them and become their pets Yeah, to they're trying to be the alpha of the world. The apex, yes. Yeah. Anyway, check out <laughs> Godzilla vs. God. It's great. On home box office maximum, I'm probably going to watch it this weekend. You Spoiler should. alert for my life. <laughs> I just liked it okay. I thought it oh. was amazing. I and guess my I five-year-old said now. it was great and nice. I won't go on because I don't want to spoil it, but he had a full Thank review. You. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I will ask for that review once I've watched it. <laughs> I will send it to you. <laughs> well, this, I think this is one of the most thought-provoking questions. Thank you very much. Host, first time and I Clearly. reserve the right to continue to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll watch yeah. Homeward Bound to see if that passes. Nope. Yeah, we'll watch nope. Homeward Bound to see if it passes. We'll watch. No um, need for that. I don't know. Milo we'll watch Otis. like Fox and the Hound. No. Where the Red Fern nope. Grows. Sandy, no. Marley and Me. Um, you are kidding me. No. No animal danger movies. <laughs> Old Yeller, of course. Secret oh, stop. Nam. There's no oh, other God, animals in that. I mean, what about New Yeller? There's a New Yeller? <laughs> you think there's, well, old there's an old and New Yeller? You can't be old in a vacuum. Know. Old's a relative term. Oh, do you think it's like that? It's like at the end of like a superhero movie where someone's like taking on the legacy of that hero. So like yeah. right at the end, new Yeller picks up old Yeller's collar. Yeah, oh, yeah old Yeller God. time travels so he can be with his love, and then gives his shield yep. to new Yeller. New Yeller, who is a Falcon. <laughs> oh my God! It's midnight, and oh, we w- okay. have been we talking it. the whole time about the movie Clueless. 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 <laughs> awesome. So now we have done all the things that we always do before. We get to our reviews, and now we do our reviews. <laughs> our rating scale, as we all remember, is Matchbox 2020, which is a Matchbox 20 cover band that just happens. They, all the members happen to look like the members of Matchbox 20, but they, they are, are not a tribute band. They don't. Right. They are an are accidental like tribute them. band. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Through coincidence. I love it. The smooth crew. <laughs> Um, Robbie and the boys do not endorse Smashbox 2020, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> yeah. Dan, you gave it yes. three. Yes. You were thinking it was of a time and not for you. I Yeah, I mean, it was definitely of a time. And I mean, it certainly wasn't probably made with me in mind because every other movie is. Um, but I did find it very entertaining like i laughed aloud quite a bit at how absurd it was uh so i did enjoy it i still like just yeah the tone of it still confuses me a little bit so like i'm still not sure if it's actually a good movie or if it's just like a perplexingly entertaining movie so i will bump to four but i will not go all the way to five Mm -hmm. but i did enjoy it so good job Hacker, Hacker Lane and crew. The Hacker crew. Beth, you gave it a four um, because when you watched it a month ago, it had a nostalgic <laughs> vibe to it, even though you had never seen it before. But you remember there were some bad words, which there were. There, there were. were. It was a bummer. It was uh, a bummer. Um, some... Yeah, I, I like this movie. I think it's very entertaining. I think that it has some pretty solid jokes in it. And Agreed. some fun performances. Um, yeah, it's not a it's not a perfect movie. Sorry for people who might think it's perfect, but um, I'm going to stick with four. I think nice. it's a I think it's a four stick level movie. Guns. And I do th- I do think that viewing it a month after I'd just seen it was not exactly a fair <laughs> amount of time to give it because I was like I just saw this movie. <laughs> but it was good. Well, it sounds like you should blame the listeners that we are supposed mm-hmm. to be respecting. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. I gave it a two because I couldn't remember much about it and don't care. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. I don't know. I um, did, did a callback to a previous movie where I asked within the first five minutes in our text thread if it was too early for me to hate this movie. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> uh, because I hated it right away. Right. Can but you... The, I don't know exactly where this is going, but if it's going where I think it's going, can you do a quick sidebar and talk about how much you respect our listeners and how you're so glad that they voted for this yes. movie? At the same time, I love our listeners. Um... <laughs> And I respect them. And I'm so glad they picked a movie for us that we might not have normally seen, though we probably would have. <laughs> um, but then there were other times watching this movie where I was like, this is great. I love the energy of this. This is out of control, cuckoo bananas. Um, but then other times I was like, oh, I hate this again. What is happening? I don't understand. There's too many things happening in this party. How did that shoe hit Ty in the head so fast? She was too far away, and I that think it came amazing. from the wrong angle. You. What? That's what. That's what threw you off. Way off. This movie? The <laughs> shoe is my, physics is my time. <laughs> as much time as I want. I don't see the floor. Um. So, I guess a three. I guess. I guess I got to hit the middle. Uh. Because it was such a roller coaster. I appreciate it exists, but I don't have any childhood attachment to it, so it's not getting any boost there. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say three. I cede my okay. time to the senator from the Soviet Union, Molly Chase. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Hi, this is Molly. Um, I. I, this movie was so much more inconsistent than I remembered it mm. and inconsistent in pacing and theme and like actor levels and comedy levels. But um, I still feel like it was a flawed gem. And the reason it didn't feel fresh is because um, so much of uh, the slang and the communication style has been adopted into regular culture. Right. But in 1995, there hadn't been anything quite like this. And so I have respect for that. Similarly to how I have a lot of respect for our listeners nice. and like a lot more respect than Dan Jaquette has. No, just no question. For example, no question. Yeah. Wow. Just off the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> In those um, and I did not find myself easily confused by what happens at a party because I guess I've been to some parties. <laughs> I so. Whoa. I guess be nice. so. Did you get hit by a shoe when you were young? Yeah. You know what? Probably, but not at a party. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Was it when no, you were... I mean, you know when you're young, like, yeah. shoes just go flying. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. That like, when you're happens. young or, like, you illegally invade a country and then are standing up <laughs> with a government official and the yep. greatest journalist in the history of mankind <laughs> is there and <laughs> throws a shoe at you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, experience. stuff like that. So, yeah, it, you can get hit by a shoe. I, I didn't find that to be, like, daunting at all. Um, but, wow. but I did feel a little sad because some of the ways that I felt attached to this movie from before didn't really mm. carry over. Yeah. However, I'm stubborn in my love for this movie, and I give it a four and a quarter. Ooh. Wow. Oh, yeah. So how many 20s is that? That is... Um, one hundred eighty. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were just a Matchbox five five. <laughs> Do we already make well, the joke? Before it was Matchbox hundred hundred. Oh, yes. okay. It was twenty twenty times five, but this time it's like twenty twenty times four point two five, and I didn't have the energy for that. Okay. All right. Well, I, I guess... feel like I would, but it's like after midnight. It's after and midnight. Something it happens. Eighty five. Yeah. As what? 8585. Oh, the Matchbox 8585. I hope. God, I hope I did that Oof. math right. Said it confidently. Oh. Now I'm rolling back. Well, you're yeah. a real share about this. Edit real... this so my math is correct. I think that's right. <laughs> Please just come in with voiceover. <laughs> Matchbox 9292. <laughs> no, Beth, can you can you just come in like sharing this movie and just be like, and it was after midnight, and while well, everyone had a good time. Uh, the show took a real nosedive, <laughs> and I felt that it was time <laughs> to just just cut the cord. Yeah, yeah. But just, yeah, um, before we ramble on, and Beth edits the show so it sounds good in the end. Um, we <laughs> also, as part of uh, Respect Listener Opinions Month, we also gather other opinions beyond movies. Yes. In a little section we call 
survey talk. Oh, <laughs> Great. fun. Um, which one? Uh, one talk. lucky Lucky's survey, survey talk survey talk. will receive some Toach merch. Toachmerch.com. But mm, no, that's not it. Right. Nope. Check it out. Um, so but people shared things with us. Um, to be real, thank you so much, everybody who filled it out and everybody else. Um, but it's always so nice this time of year to see that people still like the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, people say such nice things that it does uh, warm my sad little spin bottle frayed heart. Oh, <laughs> not. buddy. Um, so thank you. One in particular, I'll just read one so we can all have our hearts warmed. Okay. A uh, relative, I, uh, we asked, how did you find the show and why did you keep listening? And one answer was, a relative shared it with me, hashtag totes fam, and honestly, this continues to be one of the funniest, most comforting podcasts I've heard. Probably the hardest a podcast has made me laugh. You've got the banter, the callbacks, invented characters with entire lives worth of backstories, the insightful commentary, truly something for everyone. Thanks so much for sharing your work with us. Oh, that is so kind. Uh, I'm so glad sweet. we read these at the end. Yeah. And Thank you very much, yeah. person. I like everything everyone wrote, but I wanted to share that one because it was nice. That is and nice. And we deserve nice things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? So that took to a this is for us, respect us. <laughs> Ooh, pivot. I don't know how they do things in Northern California. Yeah. <laughs> we wear flippy floppies, loose cargo shorts, and Massimo t shirts. That's how we do it. Do, 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 do. <laughs> We respect you. Thank we you, listeners. Respect you. It's 3 a.m. and I'm respecting you. Totes Recall is hosted by Molly Chase, Beth Gibbs, Dan Jaquette, and Dan Linden. Produced by Beth Gibbs. New episodes of Totes Recall drop on the 15th of every month. For more information and bonus content, visit us at totesrecall.com. Thank you so much for listening.